go. Hold on. No, you're in OBS there. Okay. Yeah. There Random. Okay. So you're good to go to move? Yeah, yeah, now it's working fine. Beautiful. I just don't know why I lost control for a Great. second. I think you had, the, you had the wrong focus. That's right, on the window. Okay. Welcome to the park. Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, let's talk about the character, Lorraine. Um, we wanted to build a full body character so that we could test out making characters work in Unreal. So we have uh, Lorraine. She has a full, obviously, a full character model, which is quite unusual for these type of games. Allows her to cast a shadow. Um, Basically, the idea was just to test how character movement would work in uh, in Unreal 4, so we started testing around with that. And of course, we tried to make a graphically appealing game, but we had one artist on this, so a lot of it was testing how much cool stuff we could kick out in the time we had. Cool. Um, and obviously, we had some assets from TSW, but we had to remake a lot of them um, using the, the, the physics-based rendering. So we had to do a lot of stuff uh, differently. And so there was, a, there was a big learning curve with the park that we wanted to get through. Um, so it was pretty cool. So I don't know how many people have played the park, but this is one of the one of the things that I wanted to do was make sure that if people tried to leave the park, they'd have something interesting happen. So mm. this is... Uh, going straight for the achievements. I'm going straight for the achievements. No. So when I you try to leave, to do in the park. you get a voiceover, and then she turns. She's, she's mysteriously going back to the park. Back to the park. So, yeah. She's taunted. <laughs> <laughs> so you played this right, Ramon? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, of course you played it. I <laughs> but I mean, I mean, like, have you played it since? For we this stream, I'll just be, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> have you played it since we? I have, it? Joel. Because I remember when uh, when you played the builds, <laughs> some of the earlier builds. <laughs> there's a lot of good feedback, and when I say good, I mean slightly worried feedback from Ramon. <laughs> Yeah, there has been. Uh, so as you may know, I mean, I, I joke about Joel like all the time. Like uh, we've been what? working you do together that? for yeah, such good <laughs> only behind your back, only behind your back. Um, but we've been working together for like almost ten years now. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, so we we've learned to trust each other a lot. Like you know, knowing our strengths as um, designers, um, and then so you know, like. It, We've worked together, I mean, on Age of Conan, on uh, on The Secret World, and then on the park, it's kind of the first time that we, we've been separated, so we've been like, you know, I've, um, Joel has been asking me, asking me for feedback as we're going through uh, some of the some of the games, so I got the chance, or horror maybe, of playing some of the earlier builds of the games, and um, no, I think it was very interesting, because yes, I had a lot of uh, worries, like, um, in the game at some point, I felt like, you know, the, the story didn't come through. Um, clearly enough, there were some gameplay sessions that felt a little bit underwhelming. Um, and then I think one of the things that surprised me the most is uh, one that you listened to my feedback, which was great. But the, the the second thing was really the speed at which things were changing into the games. Like it's kind of a you know I'm used to the tool, I'm used to working on a, with Dream World technology, and it, it's true that you know the uh, the tools are different. They are, you it's know they they capable, they have different capabilities. Like you know they're better in terms of multiplayer type of a uh, um, building, but in terms of single player, like I'm still fairly new to Unreal, and I was just so surprised how quickly they could go iterate through the game and really making some really really cool changes. Like that really really helped in gameplay and really able to change things quite dramatically as well and being able to you know to do like a proper iteration not just like a, a tweak like really really dramatic changes which was really cool and I, I think the product at the end was uh, was pretty awesome like um, great well, thank you honestly thank yeah you. that was awesome yeah. and you can say that honestly which is nice honestly <laughs> yeah it is uh, you wouldn't have said that a month before <laughs> <laughs> we're all very so I would not be on this stream in, in one, one of the, one like, of the cool know. things about the park for me and one of my favourite things about the park was that I got to revisit Secret World and I have so many favorite things in Secret World, but one of the things that I like is like all the little, you drop in hints here and you throw out little little pieces here to the players, and as a writer on the Secret World, that's so much fun. So this is, of course people recognize this. A kid from the Academy told me this story, so don't blame me if it sounds silly. He might have been poking fun at a poor townie, but I'm writing this down because the League needs to know. William D. Now, the park timeline was a little bit of a, of a thing that we had to to work with a bit because the park like there's a lot of lore in in Solomon Island talking about when the park op opens actually the park opening and closing stuff was only on the official website and you can just ignore the official website the, the, the stuff on there doesn't count as lore 
Anything in the game, official. Anything outside of the game, not so much. So, um, <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> and and uh, so, so uh, yeah. So we were trying to figure out the timelines because the league was actually formed in around 1981. So this is the very early stages of the League of Monster Slayers. There have been other kids in the past that did stuff, but the official sort of League of Monster Slayers that Danny is a part of, it sort of started to form up around 80s. The parents, right? It was, yeah. it was Danny's parents yeah. and everything, like the first, so, first generation. Someone is living in Atlantic Island Park at night. You can see him there, tall and thin and ragged, a man in a suit who seems to disappear when it, whenever he moves into the shadows. Seven of the kids from Innsmouth Academy snuck into the park over the fence one night. They wandered among the rides and the closed stalls. They could feel someone watching them. When they went to leave, there was only six of them. The weirdest thing, though, is that when they got back to the academy, none of the adults noticed that there was a kid missing. It was like the adults had their memories erased. That the missing kid and everything about them was just gone. The kids at the academy tried to remember. They call the man in the ragged suit the boogeyman, and they say to be careful, because if he gets you, the whole world might just forget about you. So that's kind of fun, because I get to build a little bit on the, the canon of the Boogeyman, mm. because the Boogeyman, of course, exists in the secret world, and, you know, because B-powered fighters get to kick his butt, I wanted to build on the mythos of that from the outside. Like, what do people who, who have sort of encountered something mm -hmm. in the park? And, of course, this is tension building, and I don't really expect any player who doesn't you know, who, who doesn't like to go digging around in all the spaces to ever find that note. But it was just something I wanted to put in there, so... And I've seen, just to make it clear, so a small reveal here, like, you know, you've seen that, um, that uh, pop-up. So the, the, the monster shown in there, like, you know, watch the boogeyman. Uh, I, I've seen people wondering if it was Saeed or, like, Kirsten Giroux about makeup, maybe. But mm -hmm. it is, it is uh, <laughs> yeah. the boogeyman. Oh, one cool quick thing also I wanted to add something. is that, so the voice of this the announcer that's asking place. folks to oh, yeah. go to their thing, yeah, so, that, so that's actually our very own uh, Sesmer, also known as Lori Payne. Uh, she, yeah, her, we, we got to use her voice uh, in the game and she's super proud about it. Yeah, and it was, she's it was really good to too. Yeah. 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 She sounds really good. I was yeah. really happy. Yeah, she, she really nailed it, yeah, it was yeah. awesome, yeah. So I think she did a great job. Um, yeah, and that's one of the cool things, like at Funcom, you never know when there's going to be someone in the company's voice popping up in a game here and there. As long as they're not saying anything like honorable or anything like that, it's fine. <laughs> right. So, Atlantic Island Park, a tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who use their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all of those who follow after. Dedicated this first day of May 1977, James B. Longley. James B. Longley was actually the governor of Maine at that time. So, there you go. Joel does his research Amazing. again. Yeah, wow. I have to say, like, I've had a lot of people uh, on this stream. Like, you're probably the one who reads the best. Thank you. What? Thank you. With skills I didn't know you had. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, really important. Um, hey, Lorraine. Sort of this this scene. Lorraine. A lot of people gave us Don't feedback, and they're like, "Oh, you know, people um, lose things all the time." Oh, Take worry. a deep breath. Think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! Oh, I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. So Lorraine's little boy, Callum, runs into the park. And a lot of people kind of uh, were like, Oh, you, you wouldn't just casually walk after your kid here. You'd be running, you'd be screaming. Right. I'm a parent, I have two girls, a five-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old. And I promise you, if you've been in an amusement park with your kids for a day, and one of them runs away, you're just like, oh. and you walk <laughs> after them. You don't care. You're like, like, whatever. So yeah, that was kind of fun. And here we introduce our shout mechanic. So this was cool. So sh so this was really kind of the key core aspect of the game. Callum, I doing told the you shout to wait in the car. Um, this way, Mom. We really, really wanted to give sort of. We really wanted one mechanic in the game. We wanted to keep it very simple. It's obviously like a walking simulator type game where you walk around. There's no failure state. You can't die. So we wanted to make sure that there was a mechanic or two and we wanted to sort of try to refine them and make them interesting. So that's part of what we did with the shout mechanic. So I'm just looking at the Nathaniel Winter welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. Nathaniel Winter being the um, Willy Wonka type uh, figure who mm -hmm. created okay. And that was actually the direction, making him look like a creepy Willy Wonka. Oh, I just think that's cool. So that's, that's his... I love his face here, it's nice and... <laughs> <laughs> nice just and those, dead, those dead, dead eyes. 
park. And then read fire, yeah, so here's a little bit about different things in the park. I'm not gonna read this entire thing. It's uh yeah. But it's it's fun, it introduces Chad the Chipmunk. So yeah A lot of references. Yeah, a lot of references to the secret world. Yeah, a lot of TSW references. references. And there's Callum up the top of the escalator, so we're gonna jump on the escalator. Um, you know, you can Callum, shout after Callum. Where are you going? And then there's something oh, you don't have special socials. about the entrance to the amusement park. Set them Settings. Um it's under it's under audio, isn't it? I should know. Great. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side. So yeah, funny thing the actually. I think that uh, lives. wasn't that uh, the escalator other, the first thing really. Anything we might dare to dream? Made for the game, like the first type of gameplay was in the so very no first iteration. Of back in inside. Yeah, we we made the escalator really early. It took us like two weeks to figure out how to do it. <laughs> it doesn't use animation. It's all physics driven, um, which is kind of cool because we didn't have an animator. We had to figure out how to make things work. And then uh, yeah, so so like there's a sort of this moments here where the rain almost blanks out, almost has like a, you know, the screen shakes and, and things have changed. Um, and the park itself has become dilapidated and rusted and, and you know, dark and foreboding, right? Things have changed. And, uh... This is just a cool view there. Oh God. Like yeah. a single, this is like a big wheel. Classic fantastic art direction, right? Really framing what the Ferris wheel from yeah. the distance between the buildings and getting the lighting right. It's, it's really cool. And uh, I'm, I'm, I have neglected to mention, but our uh, amazing voice actress Frida Wolf, like who did learn, yeah. she, I mean, she carries this game. She's amazing. And uh, those sessions with her were really tough on her voice bet, and tough on yeah. her. So she did great. Um, so you know, we wanted the it game to have minimal UI. Here. So it's like you, you, you can, you know, look at signs in the park. You get a you are here star, basically being able to see where you are. Unreal has cool adaptive lighting stuff, so when you s stand close to things, it, it brightens them up a bit for you. Um, Stop, Callum! The shout mechanic's in full force now. I can also sprint. We wanted to make sure that, like, for me, like, a lot of these games do things like they slow you down, you can't run. I feel like that is, like, the absolute worst kind of design when you deliberately slow players down to present, pre like, quality over quantity, right? Like, yes. Adding a sprint probably reduces the length of the game by 15 minutes, but you know what? Like, who cares? Well, yeah, when you're actively like, moving controls, are there. Yeah, no, 15 minutes of being frustrated is yeah, not really yeah, a exactly. well added time. It's yeah. not something. And no one likes like control being taken away from them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so that was like a big. It was a big discussion because people were like, "Oh, the, the game will be longer if you don't have a sprint." And QA, like the QA guys here, I got to give them credit. They were like, "No, Joel, don't let them do that. Make sure there's a way to run." And I was like, "Yeah, I absolutely agree." So it's it's about making the right calls from a design perspective, right? So, Karakillian is Satan's whore. <laughs> Those of you who who know the Secret World, the Black House sort of stuff, they they know that storyline, and we wanted to just put in some subtle references there. Subtle. <laughs> well, they're subtle to people who don't really know, like pe and especially people who don't remember who Karakillian is, right? Like. Come out, sweetie. And so. With the shout mechanic, I like to use it a little bit. I don't like go over the top you, of it, but I use it to check the world for things, me, right? Mommy. So, I think this and then we to wanted to like this was actually something that our junior gameplay designer implemented, and we were like, yeah, we can use this. So like we actually didn't implement this before like uh, September on the park or oh. October. Like it was getting close. We basically implemented the ability to turn things around in 3D. Before that, everything in the game was media pop-ups, which is the cool system that TSW has Chad that we the want to have. Right? Huh? Yeah. Just a drunk Chad guy the Chipmunk seen. welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. Chad can be seen in daily ice sculpture shows in the following locations. 11 a.m. Sideshow Alley, 1 p.m. The Octatron, 3 p.m. Park Entrance. And then my favorite rhyme that I really enjoyed writing. Chad the Chipmunk, worst in class, Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead-end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Poor Chad. That's so Poor sad. Chad. And, yeah. And look at him. Poor old Chad. All right. So What's we this? scattered a bunch of these sort of notes across the park. This is basically Nathaniel Winter's diary. And I, I guess at this point, it's a good time to talk a little bit about the story layering in the park. Yeah. The park has sort of ma like it has several major themes. It has a. a Mythological theme, which is the the Hansel and Gretel storyline, which we'll, we'll come to. It has the story, the direct story, which is Lorraine searching for her son in Atlantic Island Park. It has 
the story of the park, which is more environmental type storytelling with these notes along the way. And then it has the story of, you know, the much larger thematic story of the park itself, which is more about what it means to be a single parent and dealing yeah. with certain things in your life. So we really tried to layer in these stories. And, I, you know, there, there are places where I'm absolutely happy with how things went. There are places where I think I, you know, I was a little too obtuse and, and made things a little too obvious for people. But that's usually the type of thing that you get time to iterate on in a larger game. And in a game with development so short, we just didn't have time. I had no editor, I had no filter. Callum, I was basically just doing stay where you stuff are. on my own. Lots of people don't notice Callum here, by the way. Oh, Riding a boat. I noticed that on my first playthrough. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, so, cool. so like for example, there's a lesson oh, learned. I would like if I was doing another iteration, he'd have a torch. He'd have a lamp with yeah. him in the boat. Just the light source would highlight him enough, let people know. And then, this is cool. Like we had to add the second swan coming in after Callum left to prevent people from almost catching up because when mm. we added sprint people could run down here jump on the boat and be like a meter behind Callum so we, we we took it very seriously like we're trying to fix the speeding and stuff um this is the steam build right yes I cannot speed this up should I just jump ahead of the Hansel and Gretel do you think what do you think Ramon uh, what is the fighting session? The chat I don't know. Thing. Yeah, let's what what go the chat thing. thing. Yeah. So uh, while we're in this little interlude here, we sure. do have a kind of an interesting question. So someone was asking, what is being whispered in the background while you're looking at the Winter's notes? Oh, if you're standing under the lamps? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen other people seeing this, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. No, I'm not gonna say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, it's, it's a, it's a it's, like... it's a it's a collage of different whisper whisper sounds. Okay. So it's a bunch of different stuff uh, said by the boogeyman, basically. And, okay. Um, and filtered, changed. There's a bunch of lines I recorded for the boogeyman. Like literally, I recorded seventy different lines with mm -hmm. that guy, and we used like five of them in the game. Yeah. It's it's actually kind of a shame. Um, we might as well start the yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's, we're going to talk at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're on it. Yeah, okay. we're just going for it. Okay. So great. it's something to show actually later. Actually, do you, uh, I don't know if people know exactly what you know what that question was about. Will will make you listen to those whispers. Like yeah. the actually, it's something I do want to say about in general for me is the 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 soundscape of the entire game. I think was phenomenal. Like um, uh, awesome. Simon Poole, we did uh, Simon and Ari, amazing. Yeah, it's very very good um, sound designers, uh, and yeah, they did a tremendous job like into getting this together. I think it's playing this game like on your own, just with your headphones on, like it's really really immersive. Yeah. It's very very cool. So this is this section is a bit controversial. Though. This is the fun part. A lot of people gave feedback that they, this felt too long, too dragged out. It's a story they know, sort of thing. What we wanted to do here, and like from a technical pers perspective, was like I wanted to experiment with environmental storytelling. So I was telling the guys like, hey, how can we tell a story in the game? I don't want to use a cinematic. Yeah, I want to just try out something. And we talked about having the player actually walk through a tunnel and have that trigger things. But then we, you know, we thought it was more appropriate with the the lake yeah. right, and, and following the swan. So we did it. It, it takes about, I think it's about six and a half minutes to go through the entire thing, which is of course a long time in game time where we keep you passive, right? Like you, you can't do much in here apart from look around. So we really wanted to make sure that the story was somewhat interesting. It, yeah. And and I think like on some level, this story frames a lot of what the game is about thematically. Um, it's about hunger. It's about do not fret, you know, Gretel. It's about Absolutely hunger. Said. It's about this theme he of like being hungry, heart, not just necessarily for um, to fill his pockets. for food, for which food. is kind of the, the the cannibalism implied in the story and all that sort of stuff and where it comes from. And the original story of Hansel and Gretel, I mean, the, the parents morning, abandon the their children because the children they're starving the and they, forest. you know, in, they in, leave, it's it's sort of set in the the, the original bread. famine in in Europe, which is you know medieval times. They they actually did eat children. To keep the village alive, they would sacrifice Clever a child. And leave the trail of white stones it, behind them. As with all fairy tales, extremely dark undertones. When their father um, leaves them, the and the, this story is a, is a little bit about hunger. Apparently, uh, apparently, there's an Easter egg where you can actually see Chad. He's right, right. Oh, there he is. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I just nice. got the there he is. Too. Awesome. Oh, so uh, real quick, while we're going through the scene, I yep. was uh, going to put a little raffle up for a couple of parts. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So we're going to get that started for you in just a moment.
Tomorrow Twitch. Tomorrow I will Tappa take Tappa. them into the woods <gasps> myself. <laughs> so I told the woodcutter. Wow. So, so you, you know, get, you know your Twitchery. So you can go ahead and participate in the raffle by simply typing in the morning, uh, exclamation raffle a slice in of chat. Bread and led them deep into the forest once again. So yeah, so the other thing actually here, just we're talking about Simon Sagan ago, this is actually him uh, also doing oh, yeah. the, vo the voice acting for this, uh, Simon, for this section. Simon's the voice actor here. He's also like, he's an amazing voice actor. Yeah. And he's like, fill in the gaps guy on The Secret World as well. It's like whenever we need an actor and we don't have time, but we want voiceover and we don't have time to get an actor into the studio, we, we're like, Simon, could you do this? And he's usually very good. And it's something which is actually interesting. I thought about like sound designer. I'm going to out uh, Frida a little bit. I hope she's not listening because she might hate me for this or you know maybe she'll enjoy it. But she used to be as well, actually, a sound designer. That's how she started uh, her career. And as a lot of sound designers do it, like a lot of games eventually require sound. You don't get time to get... You know, you don't have time to get an actual actor, so they do it themselves, and eventually they learn. And in her case, she was extremely good at it, and was like, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm having fun doing this, so she became an actress. But now, from our perspective, she's an actress who's very, very talented, but on top of it, she knows everything that a game needs, like, you know, compared to some of actors who might not know, you know, what it's like to do breathing for video games or this kind of extra stuff. She knew all of it, so it's just like, you know, Put it in the booth, three chords, you know, and then come back later, and everything. Your game is Great. done. It's kind of a. Uh, it's oh, awesome. Yeah. People like this. Are <laughs> I should. I should give a shout out to Rob King at Green Street Studios, which is our partner in LA, because he's he's a really good director. Like he gets good work out of all yeah. the actors as well, right? And so, like when we run set recording sessions, you know, I'll be there. And I'll be giving my feedback on what the line should be like, or you know, Josh does his when, when you guys do recording sessions. But the um, old woman reminded. Like Rob the, with Callum, the boy. Yeah, we Calum wanted a real children, kid, and and afraid. that kid is five years old. The one who's doing Callum's voice, and like Rob got such a good performance out of him. I mean, I know Callum's not like front and center in the game, and, but like we recorded first with a uh, uh, a female actress, which is kind of common, right? For sure. a boy's voice, you do yeah. a female actress who's like, you know, in their 20s or 30s and they like pretend to be a young boy. Right. And like we did an actual boy in this case and it, it was light years ahead. It, sound, it sounds really authentic. It gets yeah, the yeah, feeling of the sure, kid, yeah, right? You, yeah. know, you know that there's a kid. <laughs> yeah. So that was what we pushed for and that was really cool. Awesome. So, so for quick reference also, so this raffle is actually going to be for a free copy of The Park. Um, and put we have a work. winner yet? Sweeping Let's take a look. Cleaning her heart. We should also send them a mom's hat. What? Take that counter one, folks. All right. <laughs> if I get punched so, during the stream, it'll be worth the drama. It'll be good, good for hits, man. No, no, no. For the record, we actually are setting up a counter on how many times it will feel great. It will feel great. <laughs> I'm sure you're loving this, right? I'm so sorry. <laughs> We all love you. For the record, I'm staying at Ramon's house, so if he murders me in my sleep, it's all good. I have a dog right that I train for. <laughs> Alright, alright folks, so we actually have a winner now. Uh, congratulations to, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Haffelheim. We'll have a copy of the park emailed to you as soon as possible. Congratulations and thank you. Congrats. Woohoo! Where is the opening? Haffelheim. Haffelheim. Haffelheim, your time has come. The opening is here. Get to the chopper! <laughs> Her I'm way, too, I'm game way game too jet lagged and excited to actually play the park with the amount of gravitas that it actually the deserves. Is just, like, well, this is great though because like we're getting a lot of like insight on like the design decisions yeah, yeah. and like just, into it. Like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, curious. I'm not playing this with the right attitude. Right? I'm, like, I'm like every other Twitch streamer in the world. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, it's all good. No, no, I mean, I, I personally appreciate, like, yeah, the insight that you're offering for, like, you know, the, the, the creation process for this, because this is, like, you know, this is kind of a new turn for the company. In a yeah, way, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, a back to form of stream of player games, like, it's really cool. It's, yeah, I, I, and, oh, yeah. That was fun. So, like, yeah, the final slide was, like, it was, like, I did put a twist in the story. I just, I think six and a half minutes was probably too long for the payoff. Yeah. So, like, next time I would shorten it or make the ride faster or do a few things right that we didn't do yeah. this time but i mean that's also part of the it's looking at me Roman. <gasps> oh no hold, hold him <laughs> <laughs> that was your plan all along wasn't it like the whole game just for that moment oh je suis <laughs> <laughs> oh, comment allez-vous, I knew this was a bad idea. This was a bad idea. South African. Should I do South African no, French or... No. <laughs> Australian.
I'll Let's pretend my, to be professionals. I'll do my strap. Pretend. Pretend. In your case, it's pretending. Yeah, well, in your case, it's... <laughs> don't even know what the word means, man. So with the fade to blacks getting off the rides, we also really wanted to actually add animated transitions there, but we just didn't have an animator. So it was like, either fade to black or snap to, and we, we just went with fade to black. It works. Yeah, it's a little thing, but I think like the time was well spent on everything. The electricity yeah. was shut off. Those poor children. Green. The whole world against them. The forest. The yes, I think this was an important part, like wish. telling that story with was uh, with sections. There was actually an interesting thing as well about the park when I was talking about earlier iterations and earlier Not feedback. So I had like the sister. original hand hand part of the game had a very different world. gameplay. In the fact that the the park was a lot more open. Um, and you could carry. actually go to kind of any Looking of the, the any, any rides, you know, away. anywhere you wanted. Like when the game starts, you had a choice of going left or right. And um, it made it so much more difficult, I think, on on to understand the story, to have a, a story that sort of escalated. You know, it's something we talked in like in the TSW stream. Sometimes we talked about escalation. You know, how important it is when you have a story to have this kind of a story going up. If you tell a story which is as deep as this one, uh, in kind of a in the wrong order, you can really get a very different feeling of what you should have been. So, I think it was, you know, in, it, I wasn't the only one. A lot of people get that, gave that feedback that it felt it was better to try and make it more linear. So, you know, you guys like you, you did changes to the world design and stuff to, to try and accident. funnel uh, players it's into. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, more like, streamlined. It was. Um, it's. It's like. We we've never made a like a straight horror game really mm. like even though I you know I call this a psychological horror it's it's not directly a horror jumpy mm -hmm. sort of violent sort of game but um, yeah one of the things was really interesting because when we started out it was like each ride had a theme theme to her you know what was going on with her and what was going on with Callum and there was kind of like we started out with an open world map yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. like you can go anywhere and the only thing that we're going to make you do in the end is the house of horrors so you could go to any ride at any time but when we tested it the more and more we tested it the more i realized that it just it like it doesn't work with the sort of the building of tension yeah right so like it's sort of we we, we first put in a step where there was three stages of escalation in the tension and then we eventually Stop. just made it linear Stop hitting the table. Stop hitting the table, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm excited! I'm Italian, I talk with my hands! Now, funny thing is actually, on, I think on the first stream that we did with Joshua, that's the two of us where this is something like, I think we we tend to talk, like very, very get very agitated, and that was one of the main things. We kept hitting the table, and then, uh, yeah, we learned this on that first stream, and everybody in the chat was like, stop hitting the goddamn table! <laughs> Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the banned writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon, I will know if this has all been for nothing. Very ominous. So we were not making fun of you at all in your back. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> it's a lovely dramatic reading, sir. <laughs> I was trying to read it. It's like, <laughs> God damn it, I'm too far from the screen. The, um, you turned into Mr. Burns. I, I totally kind of missed, way. by the way. Yeah, he is Mr. Burns in a way. <laughs> that's that's why you're channeling. I, I went into the character that Nathaniel I wrote. Is. I missed the the other note that I skipped on the bench. Like, I just mm -hmm. looked at it very briefly. I actually missed one of the coolest references in the game. So, this is cool, and I'll walk as I talk about this. Marketing, and, like, market, the marketing team <laughs> and the management team, they really hated the, the prototype name that we have for the project, which was just Atlantic Island Park. Right? That was what we called it internally. And all of the guys on the team were, like, the three of us, well, like, Atlantic Island Park is a good name because it explains, you know, where the location is. And people were, like, in internal in the company management were like, no, 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 no. Like, Atlantic Island Park means something only to secret world players. And this game is more than just for secret world players. It's for a lot of people, right? And they, you know, theoretically they're right, but we were very proud of our name. And we were like, Atlantic Island Park, Atlantic Island Park. And there was a lot of back and forth. And so, when you read that note that particular note mm -hmm. by Winter, because obviously after a process we came up with the name The Park, which is, you know, it, it, it doesn't alienate people who haven't played the sequel, sure, yeah. so that's kind yeah, of the It's a good name, it's works. definitely like it does what it needs to yes, be. It's exactly. kind of a... so, so that's fine. 
but like when I wrote that note from Nicholas Winter, he says he says um, Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect, and there's no other name I could imagine it possibly being. And that is me just doing this to market, which, <laughs> which is which is which you know is very unprofessional. I'm just saying that right now, but it's kind of. He's Australian. You, sometimes they you have a lot of expect, uh, Sometimes you have a lot of fun when you you work in game development because you get to put in all sorts of simple stuff. That's all that was it was funny because actually yeah. in the reviews, Make like I think like he I read the this. Only yeah. that read, he, was the, he was the only person that got that that was what I was doing with that note. Roman sent me a message yeah, like, doing, like ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was really funny. And now we know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and now everybody knows. Just, yeah. Internal okay. jokes. So this is a witness report from somebody called Norma Creed, who was at the park with her children. We were waiting for our turn on the ride, Frank, me and the boys. I was doing Norma. I was channeling the Norma Creed. <laughs> oh, you were doing the Norma Creed. Oh, yes. <laughs> sure you were. The fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those silly suits. Of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the, the ice, and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion. But as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of the block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey. Like you were prey. And that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground who was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick. And blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. So, nice creepy moment from Norma, giving us feedback on everything. Uh-oh. <laughs> for those that can't see, for, for those watching at home, uh, our lead producer just uh, went, went and greeted us over at the glass uh, window. I, I, think he was, I think he's been watching the stream and he heard my comment about marketing and he's there giving me the <laughs> He's like, oh, what? <laughs> I was like, it's okay. And he almost wound you. Yeah, so. uh, and, he, and then he almost showed me. <laughs> oh, we, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to talk about that. All right, <laughs> there we go. So this is the Octatron. It used to be that you could jump on the Octatron whenever you wanted. So really, like, this part of the ride is just us messing around with physics. Um, so the Octatron is super How cool. Tell them, uh, on the needle. Yeah, I'm the sure needle on the, the center. Yeah. Oh, I love how the sound just gets, like, really, oh, like, the, the sound, sound is, awesome. is amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's like... It's all plugged in, right? So this is really cool because this is this entire ride is driven by an Excel sheet. I'm not even kidding. The we didn't do any animation. It's all physics driven, which is something we don't have in Dreamworld, so it was cool. That was like we were like, we gotta test this out in Unreal. So this is all completely physics driven, and there's an Excel sheet that we imported into Unreal that basically just gives it variables on you know, moving up and down mm -hmm. and spinning around. And it just switches between those cells to, to see what values it should have, and it creates this really nice random movement on the ride. So you get this cool sort of way it moves. And then we wanted to allow people to ride all the rides in the park. That was one of our goals. And we, were always, we always figured, like, if we didn't meet one of the goals, like if we didn't get a ride finish, we could always just put a sign that says mm -hmm. out of order or something. So, But we managed to get every single ride working, which was really cool because it was our, our, sort of, our aim for the project mm -hmm. as well. So this is the Octatron. And it's kind of fun, and again, all driven by Excel. Pretty cool. You can see someone in the booth there if you look closely. Lorraine still has a body, which is nice. That was one of the things, because this is a different character. This is not Lorraine. This is the, the ride character. So some lessons into video games. Okay, this is uh, some of the tricks that we often do. Yes. For us, your, your character is often Very pretty for experience of the improved boogie man. Yeah. So someone in Twitch chat who's actually named Frida Wolf, and I'm not sure if this is the actual Oh, it Frida could be Frida! If it's it actually be. you, please hey. try to confirm it with us, but... Hey, Frida! <laughs> she goes, sure I lost count of the times I yelled out while playing, Joel, you're messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, but she, 
She also did that in the voice session. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Frida. Awesome that you could come. She also says come that she America. really wished that she could just break everything when uh, accelerating an octatron. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We want to. We we originally. It is, it is Frida. I just confirmed from. Oh, great! Uh, awesome. awesome. Welcome, Frida. Oh, she says it's this. always me, Durr. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Frida. Thanks for joining us. I, I suspected because I posted on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, she'll show up in our stream. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome. I'm only going to say nice things now. And none of, I'm not going to tell them any of the bad stuff. I know. Though, so <laughs> <I'm great>. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. See in the background, hopefully people notice the detail that we put into these sort of things where we build the, the It's really like when we're talking about replayability of the game, I think it is one of the main replayability, like replay factor of it is all of those details. Like, you know, I haven't, like Fletcher myself, I haven't been involved in the game this way, but playing Fletcher it, like I see all those little things. <gasps> you gotta through every playthrough. Yeah, she's, she's talking. The first time I saw Callum. <laughs> Uh, actually, this was the, the piece of oh, writing. Can tell. This is the piece of writing that Eurogamer referred to as Amateur Poetry Hour. Is that it? Oh, wow. So thank you, Eurogamer. We, we appreciated that. It was fun. And the world <laughs> that I built for Callum was no different. Hey, at least so you were real. writing about us. That was awesome. You know, one little thing I wanted so to do. So actually, uh, we're yes. talking about since uh, the real Lorraine is in the channel, and uh, and oh, yeah. then we just show the boogeyman. Uh, let's have a look Lorraine. at. Uh, <laughs> that's not, not tough, Frida. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so let's do. I'm sure Frida's gonna be like, I'm nothing like it. <laughs> so uh, we're just gonna take a quick break from actually playing. We're gonna switch over to the full cam now. Here are some cool little concept art. Oh, I see so this is. This is the concept for Lorraine. This is the official concept art that we used for the game. Um, you can see that the... So I, I remember reading on the artist's blog about this, that the high-waisted pants were like the iconic yeah. element of yeah, the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, so as soon as she draw that, it's just like, so, we have to go with this. So, so Jenny, who's our, our character artist, and she's amazing, um, and she's a relatively new hire, mm -hmm. right? Like, we didn't have a character artist in Oslo. Well, she was hired for the game. She, she was, well, she was hired because we needed a character artist in Oslo for yeah, all projects yeah. going forward. And this was her first project with us. And she's and, a TSW player. And she's a guy, so she TSW came straight player, from the community. Came straight from the TSW community, came in, um, and I was like, oh, hey, welcome to the company. She started in August. I'm like, hey, welcome to the company. Here are five characters that we need by the end of October. Yay! <laughs> she was like, she was like, oh my goodness. Like, she, you know. And Lorraine was one of the characters where it was really cool because it was a really interesting process because it was like, I had a character description, I have a lot of background for Lorraine. I passed, passed that over, you know, five pages of background, read about Lorraine, re yeah, read yeah. about Lorraine's background. And then she's like, yeah, and, th and then she's, uh, you know, a fashion designer at heart. Like, that's what she did. She studied, you know, she sews, she builds costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she really got down and, down and dirty with the 80s stuff trying to figure out what sort of style she would have. And, sure. And then, um, you know, we put in details, we discussed things like the woodcutter's axe on the necklace, mm -hmm. right, because that's very thematic to the Hansel and Gretel thing. And then... And the high-waisted pants was like, she's like, those are the mum pants of yep. the 80s. That's what you need. Like it, and it is. It's like, at a glance, you understand she's a mother because those are the mum pants from that time. And yeah, you, you get the feeling, right? You, you understand the age yeah. of, of Lorraine and you, you sort of get everything. Um, and she had a couple of iterations and, and uh, yeah, we, we were, like hair was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So there's a, learning, a lesson learned from Unreal. Yeah. The hair is actually not very good in their engine at the moment like rendering hair is is quite tough and doing it properly doing the way that the way that hair is done in the industry doesn't work very well mm. and you can see that in the unreal demos they don't have a lot of hair on their characters in the big tech demos that they release and so that was one of the things that we learned we were like okay and so for the next project if we want to do hair we have to try and figure out our own solution mm -hmm. for hair or you know you know, poke the epic guys until they fix it. Right? So, <laughs> so, so that was really cool. So that's where like and, the bow and hair tie came from. And one small yes. thing, actually, talking about Jenny as well, it is as amazing as she is a very, very talented uh, girl. Like she actually, she did the concept for Lorraine and did the yes. 3D model, which is like character artists usually they're known for doing the models, um, yes. like sort of the sculpting and everything. But she is also a very talented concept artist, as you can see. Yeah, so, yeah, I should have pointed uh, that out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, very, very, uh, very she, cool. She was. Yeah, she did double work, and I believe she did some TSW stuff as well. Yeah, she. Uh, so for those of you who play TSW, like uh, the uh, if you remember the uh, the Halloween outfit that just came out was designed and made. Uh, no, actually, it was designed by her. I'm lying. 
uh, Nick made the, Nick uh, made made the, the designs. Yeah. Um, she's working on uh, some of the Christmas outfit right now, and she's actually making them as well, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and she is also the person who concepted the Camden outfit that you might remember from uh, the uh, clothing draw your yeah clothing competition that we did um, a while back. Uh, unfortunately, she had been disqualified at the time because she was working for EA, even though not directly uh, related to the park. They were a partner, so by the rules, she got disqualified. But you know, not everything was lost because we managed to uh, we, we kept in her. touch and we hired her. So. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, it was great. Should, should I jump back in? Yeah, uh, we have it. another we have another concept oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the boogeyman. Let's talk about that later, I think. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah I we'll keep so. him for later. Fine. That sounds let's, good to me. So we're, we're gonna go ahead back to the game now. Cool. All right, I'll continue. Yay! All right. So I'm going to yeah. push ahead, push ahead, push ahead. So uh, here's an interesting question that came up in Twitch chat. So, um, is it, are sales figures or anything like that, or like, you, can you comment on how the park has been doing? Uh, like, you know, public company stuff, not allowed to sure, talk yeah, about. Yeah. But um, in terms of, like, it's meeting our expectations. We right, have yeah. we, we we set sales targets, goals for the company, and it's meeting them. It's no problem at all. It's going fine. Great. So yeah, we're really happy with that, and you know. I'm really happy, I'm very with, happy that. with that too. So yeah, that's <laughs> so great. It's, it's it's meeting our expectations for the game, which is great. That's so awesome. Good. Yeah. Awesome. No, definitely, it's it's an encouragement for us to do more things like this in the future. It's uh, what we're we taking out of it. So yeah, observant people will notice there's something flashing there in the background, but you can't see what it is really. Reading the page. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be fun. I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk, child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was little things like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently, Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in the gutter outside the cycle station. Because he's sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me. And he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me. Sizing me up. Eye fucking me. Whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing. So here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. So, Laura. Oi. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> I forget about that one. I forget, I forget about that one myself. And the sound's not even on, so I didn't even get the... Yeah. Laura's an interesting character. She's Lorraine's friend. Um, so she has a place in this story. One of the things that I really wanted to do, because... I will say this. During development, people add things to games. And when you're like, when your job is like being the creative director or whatever, like it's, you've got to keep a rein on people. Because people, sure. will, people will be like, oh, that needs a jump scare. And they'll add one. But it'll have no relevance to the plot. Or it'll be like, what's this got to do? And everything in the game needs to serve the backbone of the story and the narrative in this game. So that was one oh of the cool God. things. So um, when they added this jump square yeah, with yeah, her, yeah. I was like, well, we need to repurpose this and make sure that it has a place in the story. So I added Laura as a character. Um, and Laura is Lorraine's friend who works at Atlantic Island Park. And you don't really get to know much about her. But you see her at least two or three times in the game. Guess the float's you see a picture of her, right, later on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And, yeah. More than just a picture, but we'll get to that. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so this was, real, this was another development challenge. Every time people walked in here, they ignored that. They just didn't see it. 
Right. So we wanted to we wanted to highlight it. So that's why the sparks fly yeah, yeah, when you yeah. go near it. No, I wasn't. That was my first. Show some respect. Show some oh. respect for the situation. Then. Sorry, she, I totally um, missed that. <laughs> she, uh, she. Uh, so this was cool. Like this is, you know, Pet, uh, the cinematics director on the Secret World. Obviously, we've moved him on to other things now, including this. So I had him, I had him doing the cinematics, um, figuring out what to do with the cinematics, figuring out the the way this all worked. So that was kind of fun. Um, so him and I got to reunite, and make cinematics once again. And this was uh, one of the ones that he did really quickly. Like, I think he spent half a day making that, and it worked out really well. I was just going to show you guys this. There's a pop-up over here as well. Which is the story of winter in the financial times. I'm not going to read it, but there you go. There's an extra one there. <laughs> yeah, I loved um, how like this, like this, everything was like chopped for like, a ton of, uh, ton of references yeah. to like, TSW. Yeah, yeah and actually, not just TSW. It's like it's also just, like just building the story of winter in mm -hmm. the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right? Because the the one of the things that I f I think people and and this again comes back on me. I didn't do a great job of it. Um, yeah, this is oh I can read this one. This is winter. Dissuade them. They've sent an inspector to investigate the accidents at the park. I've given him the grand tour and spoken about all of our safety upgrades, but he seems unconvinced. In this case. The park itself is working against me. This Dow man has become more and more intractable the more time he spends in the park. I've offered to pay for his stay in the Overlook Hotel to get him out of here. Should be motel. I blame myself. It seems to have made him even more paranoid. I don't think this man is going to allow my park to stay open. This is a disaster for my ultimate goals. So, um, one of the things that, yeah, like, these things are all about building the, the winter story yeah, yeah. in the background, right? And ultimately, like, one of the things that I wanted was people figure out fairly early what's really going on, or they suspect. And one of the things that I noticed reviewers talked about was, like, they were like, oh, yeah, we, we sort of figured it out, and then, eh, I just played through to the end and I was, I was bored. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you were bored? This, the, like, the whole point of this is that you do figure out what's going on relatively quickly, like, you know, between... 50 to... Wait, wait a second, actually. Yeah, uh, just 50, finish that train of thought I wanted you to do something. 50 to 70% of the game through, we, we wanted people to figure out what was going on. And then be absolutely terrified that they were right. Because to me, that's real horror, right? It's like... Yeah. It's like... Did... Wait. Wait, wait, wait. No? No, 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 no. Like, that sort of feeling. That feeling sure, yeah, when... You yeah. know, and I described it with one, of, with one of the other journalists. It's that feeling when you... You're going, you know, 80 on the freeway and you, you, you see someone break really hard and you're like... God, am I going to hit him? And you break, and it's like you, those yeah. are the scariest moments of your life when you, you're not sure. Yeah, it's I mean, it's falling and you know, yeah, yeah. Seeing, it's falling towards the ground. And yeah. But that's that's something which is very interesting. Like we talked about it like uh, quite a few times that you know once you know this intention, it's obvious, and yes, it's terrifying. But I think the problem with people, uh, wait a second, um, the so problem with you. people with um, uh, with horror is like. Because of because of the way most horror movies, you know, go and like a lot, of, it's not even just movies. Like any kind of a interactive horror is stole, it's always about the the twist at the end. Mm. And so people try to think of what is what is the twist going to be, and they don't let them be like saying like, we're not being subtle on purpose because we don't want it to be a twist. We want it. We want you to know about it. We want you to be scared that you know you're right. Yeah. But people are very, really not receptive to the kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting and, for and the people with whom it worked. It worked really, really great. Yeah. But for the people who really see, oh, okay, this is what's happening. It's like, well, you know, I now I see it coming. It's like oh, I'm disappointed because I was right. And I think, I mean, for me, it was interesting as a lesson, you know, seeing what. Happened. Absolutely, it's a lesson learned for me. One small thing we're talking about earlier about the the game actually being more uh, open. Like, you know, I was that's what I wanted to see. We're talking about the stairs, you know, in the world design changes that we did. You know, that you had an obvious path in there, and this is like destroying that path was an easy way for us to make sure people were going. Yeah, towards you used what to be able to, to walk uh, down. Yeah, so it shows into like as you can see there were so many intricate paths that allowed you to go in many places in that park. Um, that would change like fairly late in development, but I think really for the best. Yeah, it's it's it it helped it pace kind of the story. Now, <laughs> so you have to keep going all the way and going back <laughs> into it. 
<laughs> so hey, uh, real quick. Uh, so we are going to do another raffle. Uh, for another copy of the park, it's about six o'clock uh, at this time. Do yeah, you, uh, we can do it a little bit later. I think like what, towards do, the end of a. Yeah, yeah. Do it a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Depending on how you guys are, like you know, we're probably going to play through the uh, through the entire games. Like yeah, we're talking yeah, about. Fun. So you know, if you start becoming too uh, too much and you guys just fall asleep, just let us know and then we can just uh, call oh, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll pause the raffle. That's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, we'll just keep going and we'll announce it later. Cheers. <laughs> Now you gotta stay watching. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Stay tuned. Accident report. Francis Dufresne was the employee involved on the 25th of October 1976, so actually before the park opened. Labourers working on the crane. Richard Stapleton was the supervisor. Lawrence Creed and Michael Edgeworth. The people will recognise some of these names at least. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis who was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe her injuries caused. Francis was killed. Did the injured employee see a doctor? Yes. He did. It was a bit too late. If yes, did you file an employee's, employer's portion of a workers' compensation form? Yes. Supervisor comment. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with a urine sample. With urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident incident? Double checking the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. And that's the signature. So this is just another, like, in the secret world there's lore about someone yeah. being crushed by bumper cars. This is actually the story of the person who got crushed by bumper mm-hmm. cars. And it's, it's a familiar name for the area as well, so people will dig into that. Or it might be creepy me singing, I don't know. <laughs> All the wrong that, reasons. I feel like that scene was like kind of referencing what you were talking about, but also like, you know, you're going on the highway and, you know, you exactly. don't know whether or not you're going to crash into the car. Yeah, the you. headlights yeah. are coming yeah. to man. And, and we lock you down so that you can't move to exactly create that, mm-hmm. that, that tension, right? And that was really fun, and there we got to test destructible physics, smashing through the gate here. We were able to, like, it's really cool. Like, there's lots of things in games that I guess people don't think about. But, like, it's incredibly important with guidance, right? Like, so having the car crash and having the lights flash on the staircase is the most natural way to tell people, this is where you need to go next. I was just about to say this. I mean, this is really rule number one of design. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We mention it in a lot of the design, like... uh, Lots of games completely fail at it, so... It's and it's, it's something which is like you'll notice in a lot of games now pay attention to lights and you'll notice that every single time you have to go somewhere I mean in, if games usually are well made and if you understand where you're supposed to go it's because the light is telling you there it's yeah. like you know taking your place for moth really and we get attracted to it and this is the same reason why Joel you know, jo was saying earlier adding a, a light to Callum when he's on the swan boat really would make your eyes pop small. to it right away because it, it changes those colors and it really makes you look at it Don't even remember and that's what great it was. like it's really it's very and natural like you know we were afraid of things to the People will miss it. Watching my boy through the window. Really, they just go didn't like what I saw. It's quite fun. How the judgment. Sorry, I'm, I'm not. Gonna you wrote me the ticket that. without saying a word. <laughs> talk about the writing just a little a scratch, bit. It's quite fun how the, the like notepad. the expressions when that she uses. Our eyes on pe- people who played the park and people. I know what you're going so through. They, I, I noticed they start using them, like in the world. So today we were actually somewhere. Help we were talk- discussing something, and the CEO Help of Hong Kong said, "You know, it's a matter of public is. record." <laughs> <laughs> and I, yes, that's an expression, but I know where he got that from because he is not a native English speaker as well. So he learned that in the park. Me. It was really cool. But instead, my mouth said. And of yes, course, she's sheriff. interacting with a sheriff, a particular sheriff in in this town. So that's kind of interesting. Again, I um, thought it was really interesting how like her dialogue changes as uh, like. Her, her tone and inflection and her like Alan, where did you you know, go? what she's saying like changes and keeps like getting kind of darker and darker like as it goes on too it really makes you kind of wonder like what's going on with yeah, this yeah, yeah. and we were a little bit here, here we were a little bit uh, we, we took away his replies Tell and we just have the, the creepy baby crying noise mm-hmm. which is always fun <laughs> So, and it goes well up with yeah exactly was, with all the emotion from the from the call and again talking about was this baby cry it, it's one of those things that makes it really obvious mm-hmm. it's like obviously you know you're not necessarily following Callum anymore like you know he didn't turn back into a baby so it's us being obvious on purpose and it's it's interesting to see when it gets misunderstood for uh, yeah so this was originally there's, there's a pop up here I'm just going to so they are going going it. it's place basically down. the inspector saying they're going to close the park down and he talks about the different things the bureau is still misspelled is it? Mm-hmm. they didn't fix it? <gasps> 
was worried about that. That's all right. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. It's all right. It's mm-hmm. that, was a, that was a QA bug on that. All right. <laughs> anyway. For me. I blame the artist. I blame the artist. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's not me who makes those. I just write the text. It was actually... Because I know like the attention cell of Joel, when I saw this bug originally, I asked him oh, yeah. to see, like, was State Bureau, like, intentionally misspelled that it was meant to be, like, you know, some kind of bad kind of a... Sure, we'll an academic that. kind no, of a no, paper. No. And I expected him to say, oh, yeah, sure, like it was. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, no, no, it's misspelled. Fail. Um, originally, so this is cool. Maybe, I don't know, maybe people will think it sucks. But hey, I'm going to tell you anyway, because you're my captive audience. Um, we originally had the baby, the doll, where you get the roller coaster ticket, was supposed to be on the Ferris wheel going around. And you would hear the baby crying in the carriage as it went past. Oh, right? yeah. So you'd hear the carriage. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, a really fast. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, and, and the, there was like a puzzle here where you had to yeah. obviously slow it down and then pick up the baby, the doll. And the idea was that she thought Callum was on there. Mm-hmm. And when she, she, she thought Callum was on the ride and she stopped the ride and then it's not Callum, it's a doll. And then she like, we have this, we have a full motion captured animation where she picks up the doll and she just rips its head off because she's so angry that it's not Callum. And she, has all, she had all these lines that we recorded, I'm sure Frida remembers this, and where, where she's like, you come down from there! And she's like super angry at him when he's up on the ride because he's obviously, you know, yeah, messing yeah, yeah. with her. And the idea was when you, when you came here, the Ferris wheel was stopped and the baby was crying yeah. from the top. And then you had to start the Ferris wheel and stop it at the right location. Um, but the lead designer on the project, and I disagreed about that, he did not think that was an interesting puzzle. He didn't think that was interesting gameplay. And so, you know, over time we talked about it, and, you know, in the end I said, okay, we'll, we'll do it your way sort of thing, and we moved it off. And I think it works pretty well as it is, and now you get to ride the Ferris wheel. So you actually get to sit on it and ride, yeah, which yeah. was never in the original plan, um, even though we wanted to make most of the rides rideable. So we took away a puzzle, but we added a, you know, added a ride and a monologue and you get the view of the park from up here so it was it's kind of one it's of those interesting things. stories I mean it's a good trade-off it's kind of a you know the very common again in games like with decision you have to make between a good idea and another good idea um, and I think I mean it's a shame like it's it's definitely something interesting to see that anger building like it tells a bit more about Lorraine mm-hmm. but yeah I think the story People about her husband is, a it's mm-hmm. a great way like you know being Dad able to get the view of the park as well it's kind of stunning like After you know showing that, again the world of the artist drank. into a uh, um, Things were different for Don and I. Yeah, it's when a shame you can't sit on Savage Coast. That's what you can still ride from. Yeah. <laughs> came in with some workers, but he didn't turn no, off We were going to put the lighthouse the from the secret world in here as well. He just ordered a coffee and sat there um, watching as me. As a, yeah, as a yeah, backdrop. Yeah. When my shift yeah. was over, yeah. we that. he offered to walk me home. We, we ended up thinking that, well, it probably wasn't enough time to make it look good. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. Felt like love. Word now, uh, optimization. Like that is, you right. know, kind of taking its toll. I can't like tell you if Cal was everything. made that night or one of the ones that follows. Yeah, I don't want to grind computer stuff. I think it has to be that night. Into, you know, Look on the, the other side. Perfect night. It's cool, like you get like really full control. Yeah, yeah, this is when together, it's really nice to be able to have this kind well, of attached camera with a. He died. Partial control. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed yeah, when he was so working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Dawn is actually mentioned in the secret. Dawn was there one moment. Dawn, Dawn. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. It ties in so many things. I mean, for sure, Fairy like it's a it's a game over. which is great. At a, I think for this, like I think you really succeeded into me making a game like a story which is interesting as a standard on if you don't know the secret world. But on top of it, like you know, having this other game that you could pull so many stories from and expand on them is great. Like you know, all these characters did not invent. Like all these things that have been said years ago. I talked about you know people being crushed by a. Um, by the by, cars like you know, people being uh, falling off the, the Ferris wheel and all this kind of thing is great. It's like, oh, let's mm. give them a name and let's give them like a family yeah. that you can care about, and you know, it makes those characters so much more interesting. And people who've played the park have seen like the, uh, sorry, played the Secret World have have seen the the sort of uh, the circuit that sort of lies beneath the the Atlantic Island Park. They've played those missions. They understand mm. sort of what's they understand the driving force here. Um, oh my goodness, what did I just do? Did you get lost in your own park? <laughs> Maybe. Where did <laughs> so, I park my park? Something I thought was kind of interesting about the story in there. the Ferris wheel was like, kind of detached from TSW as well. Like, I, I think a lot of us, you know, maybe I'm speaking from uh, personal experience here, but like a lot of us had like, you know, we, we've fallen in love with someone oh, before, yeah. and then 
they've been taken away from us suddenly without you know any kind of aliens you did yes correct yeah, yeah, yeah. she was abducted uh, it was very unfortunate mm-hmm. um, went off to that Jupiter and all tough, that. it was awful it was a really rough experience did you all write a song time. about that and now she's I, back in the atmosphere my secret identity has been revealed there you go um, he's, he's a train he's a train <laughs> Oh, yes, I thought, uh, Your I, face is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I felt kind of a connection to Lorraine as a character just because of like that kind of yeah. experience. I, now, granted, I don't I, think I care anything like that. Lorraine's a hard character to love. Yeah, but she's a character that I think is a piece of all of us, right? Like it's it's, it's like especially the parents, like people who yeah. have kids. If you don't recognize yourself in Lorraine, well, then you're not the same type of parent as them. And even when she's ranting, even when she's mad, because you have those moments as a parent, right? Like you have. She's about to go into this, and this is something Frida nailed. It's like, oh, it's just, it gives me shivers thinking about it. It's so cool. Oh, here's a cool, uh, here's an interesting question referencing the park mission and gravity and stuff like that from TSW. Uh, is there a way to see the circuits in the park? Is that something that you thought about making possible? Like, you know, the circuitry that, that uh, like the big, big conductor or transistor thing that was in the... This is stuff you just talked about. The, uh, yeah, you can, the you can see it in the investigation, can you? No, but no, in, in the, the park. park. Oh, no, we didn't okay, We didn't so. hide it. We should have, but we didn't. No, it's because you don't have the lenses, right? And the lens, the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like good winter's point, good lenses point. and stuff. Uh-huh. So <laughs> we could have kind of done it, but... Sorry, I just saw Nick the part go past. I had to give him a wave. <laughs> Love that man. Love that man. All right. Um, so, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Frida Nail. Like, this dialogue here, it's, it's really the first time Frida escalates a, a lot. Like, it's, it's where you hear Lorraine sort of going in. And, like... This, I wrote this thinking about the times when I am like shit, like shit angry at my yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and kids, my, my sister always says it best. Your kids are the people who know how to push your buttons better than anyone else mm-hmm. in the world. Kids and partners. A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk. Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! You give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... (sighs) We all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Damn straight, baby. You <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she's, 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 she's a bit of a caricature, sure. but I mean, there, there's these moments, right, when you're white hot with anger, and yeah. it's, like that's what I was going for, yeah. right? And it goes back into the thing, because I think so many people seeing this, saying, oh, well, it's obvious, like, you know, because she's doing this, she hates her kid. And, and even, I mean, I, I don't have children myself, but it's the kind of thing I can understand. This is, yes, you know, I did get that angry at something. It doesn't mean I, you know, I hate the world or I hate whatever that person is. Like, it's, it's what well, you have becoming dog. angry is about. Exactly, you I have, have a dog. dog. It's the same thing. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> um, but it is, it is a common feeling, and I think it, it's kind of, it, it, it is really being dishonest into people one. saying that, you know, I don't get angry at, at Everything's perfect this way. Watching. Yeah. That's like, oh my goodness. And it's not like, you know, it's, I think it's, again, it's because, like, in movies, you never see this type of feeling. It's always about you know everything's great and it's kind of a no it isn't like you know it's about being human of going through a whole range of emotion like you know potentially every day and i think it's important to Absolutely. to embrace them yeah and I, I mean that's that's how people act and i think that's yeah. one of the reasons we have such good characters in the secret world that they this it's a spectrum right yeah. people people yeah, aren't yeah. one thing they're not one-sided and they're not one thing and and I find it interesting, based on that line, people judging her like crazy for this. It's like, oh, really, yeah. for me, it's like, no, she's she's human. And like, you know, it is, yes, on top of it, she has some stuff that, <laughs> that, that made a tilt over, but that's not that moment that right. is. It's just like, it's it's a normal spur it's, of uh, anger. It's interesting, actually, the line there where she talks about choice supported bias. Yeah. That was actually a very deliberate choice huh. of words because, I, like, if, if you look at Lorraine's backstory and you know a little bit more about her and you'll learn more about her later on. And if you guessed what was going on from the bumper car scene, it's a little bit of confirmation because you see that she's interacted with somebody who knows psychological terms, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then when she's repeating them in her mind, you, if, you, if you know anything about that, which doesn't mean you do, or, you sure. know, but if you do, then you might be thinking in your head, ah, she's, she's 
either she's a psychologist or she has talked to a psychologist because that's a very analytical term for the way people respond to things choice supported bias it might be more common now because it's on the internet but because anyone can look it up but but in the 70s and late 80s i mean come on or sorry early 80s and late 70s it's like it's it's not that common an expression and that's why i put it in there because it's a, it's almost a little it's a little another little nudge yeah in the right direction all right this is fun <laughs> so this which is supposed to be absolutely and utterly jarring, cow. right? The fact that you're... What wow, do you mean? There he is. Hello. What have you done Hello. to him? Hello, cookie I, hand guy. That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. <laughs> so he he even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. The witch has him now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. did some more stuff with it which made it even funnier and crazier so so tell us more about yeah about this because I, I remember i've seen like a version of it uh without all of the, the yeah. portals like so, so i was being impressed how fast it came to be yeah so so like one of the things we did here like the roller coaster was a focus point for a conversation between her and the boogeyman and there's a very good reason for that which i'll talk about a little bit later and a lot of people are like wow it's really jarring he just comes out of nowhere you don't know this guy at all Yes, and that's kind of intentional, right? As if you play The Secret World, you have something of a relationship to this guy, but Lorraine doesn't know who he is. Why is she acting so casually around this guy? Why is she having a conversation with him? What's sort of this about? And there's a lot of clues as to what's going on, um, especially later on when we come yeah. into, into Lorraine's apartment. Uh, who was the voice actor of The Boogeyman? That is... Oh, you're going to make me say it live and say it wrong. It is Andrew Kishino. Andrew, Andrew Kishino. Kishino. Okay. Yeah. Has he done other work for us? Yeah. Just, okay. He's he's done lots he's of stuff. Of stuff he's, right. he's, yeah. He's like uh, he's just one of those people. He's just amazing again. Um. And he did. It. He loved it. He was so into the boogeyman. He's, yeah. he's the voice of Nasir. He's, he's the voice of Nasir. Oh, okay, for example. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he do, he does. Uh, does he do Dragon as well? I think he does Dragon. No, no, maybe. No, that's, is that Andre? No. Yeah, it could be Andre. Um, but yeah, he, he does a few voices. Yeah. He also did in Age of Conan, Rise of the God Slayer. He did the the God of Roads that you meet yeah. at the beginning. So he's yeah. done. A few, I've worked with him for a few years. Yeah, and he's one of he's my favorites. Awesome. He does and he's, so many tones oh as well. It's God. impressive. It's so fun to work with him. He does. He does a great Homer, like amazing Homer <laughs> as well. Um, and yeah, he loved. Like he was. Oh, he was. He had so much fun with it. He's like. Yeah. He's like. I'm going to add more texture to the boogeyman, and then he just made it creepy. I was sitting there going, eh. <laughs> "Isn't the nice. boogeyman actually? It's in TSW done by Andre. Andre. Yeah, 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 it's actually yeah. so. It's not like he's an actor. He imitated another voice actor to do because the the one we wanted originally was not available. Not so really. we had this other actor imitate another actor making a monster, and it fooled me because when I was in there, like when. Uh, uh, when Joel started saying, like, you know, oh, it was that guy who did it, I was like, you sure he sounds like Andre? I was like, no, no, he's just that good. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. There's the axe. There's the flashlight. The Bit of symbolism. Awaits. Bloody axe. The witch awaits. It's time to move on. So, with the roller coaster itself, I think we got sidetracked with the Boogeyman discussion. Um, 
Yeah, so originally it was just like supposed to be a conversation has bruises on his arms between, between her marks. and uh, the boogeyman. Someone and then has been hurting him. Marketing made a I've teaser trailer him. for the game, really which was really cool. To know where he got the marks. And we were like, but you know, answer me. we thought the roller coaster Something on its own was cool enough, but now science. we're going to add in the symbolism with Doesn't the flashing and the extra world stuff. So we did that. It He's took us about too. a week. It actually took Something one weekend in the to add the sort of the way you flash into the other world, and then made it sort of interesting. So. My apologies to everybody who developed epilepsy or some form understand. of epilepsy from the teaser trailer and that uh, section of the game. But it was really cool. Fingers. It was a lot of fun to, to add it. And yeah, yeah it was so fast. Me. Like, adding something like that in me. a couple of days and then polishing they it over a week was just... Every minute of I mean, that's, every day. I mean, yeah, that's pretty they are whispering to him. Yeah, we would so not... Like, we would never have done that. Right. It was my brain. Yeah. It's, I remember just hearing about the idea, like, you know, when I mentioned about the... One of my reports saying, oh, this, it's a little bit lackluster, and then George saying, are we doing this? And then, you know, yeah, a few days later, he's like, oh, by the way, it's done. I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was that was really fun. And it was it, it came out really, really nicely. It really does. I think it's it's fantastic. It's very smooth and very snappy, like, on a... Sideshow Alley. Was shocked by that one. Candy Cotton, co uh, cotton Candy Corpse candy. leaves sour taste in parkour's mm -hmm. mouths. I really enjoy writing headlines for newspapers. Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by the discovery of dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local authorities, the corpse has yet to be identified. However, they have confirmed that the remains appear to be those of a child. The corpse was discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy who noticed a pair of ravens tugging at something just out of sight behind the shack. Nathaniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It is a true tragedy when something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. The staff of Atlantic Island Park offer their condolences to the family and friends of the victim and will cooperate fully with the authorities to help bring this case to rest. The Sunland Chronic will provide daily updates on this story going forward. That's You'd important. Be a good newscaster. Like the way you said it could be like the remains of a child, you said this like exactly how I would expect newscaster to say it. Thank you. He's like, oh yeah, well. And I don't even watch news. Really interesting so, sometimes. So there you go. Alright, so Great. with that, there comes the sound. There's particles here. Mm -hmm. So this is really cool. Like, Unreal has level streaming, which is a system that allows you to stream in levels over the top of levels that you're already running. So this is what happens here. Um, none of this stuff is in the level until you go... Huh. until you've read that newspaper. And then this blood stains appear. We put on the lights here a bit brighter. We have the, yeah, blood spatter. And then we bring you in behind here, we lead you in. Of course, it's a bit creepy, we have sound cues. We didn't want the corpse to be too small because then people would mistake it for Callum and be like, oh, maybe that's Callum. Like, and that was uh, obvious. Yeah. So we had to make it larger. And then, of course, she asked the question, who did this to him? And let's turn around. It's Chad. You see Chad. And so Chad himself, has a pretty, it, like him and the boogeyman, so when you make a game like this, you want to have one iconic evil guy, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people thought think it's Chad, a lot of people think it's the boogeyman, those of us who've finished the game know who it really is, but like beside that, Chad and the boogeyman serve a really important purpose, which I'm going to talk about, but I really don't want to do it yet, because I'm going to talk about it when we come further in. Great. So, I'm going to take some pills instead. Um, Drugs. This was something no. that this was something that I got a lot of feedback on, and actually some some quite negative feedback. And I think oh. it's something that we wouldn't do again. I asked the designers to come up with like some pills that she was taking, right? Because I wanted to do this section. This section was originally the very first thing you saw in the game. Like after you got up the escalator, you went into here, or at least the game pulled you. Yeah, because you could go to you could right go wherever you want. Callum used to run towards that but, side, but it instead. pulled you this way. And this was way too early for this section. Yeah. And and one of the feedbacks I got was what was written on the label on the pills. I got that after launch. When we were doing it, I said to the artist, just make up a chemical name. And they chose something that was quite close to a real world oh. thing, which was okay, but it caused some people to be a bit offended. And it's like I, it wasn't intentional to be offensive. It's actually intended to be awareness raising. In yeah. fact, like, like the whole storyline here with her is it's not about... Um, demonizing people at all it's about making people realize that this is actually quite serious mm -hmm. um, some of this stuff these are mine and it's from flags pharmacy flag being one of the one of the board members of valley medical 
Um, oh, okay, yeah. In the early 1900s, as well as the guy who owns a pharmacy in, uh, in Kingsmith. In Kingsmith. But he's, he, he created that pharmacy, he got rich, and then he made a chain, and then he moved along. Um, it's a bit of a shame here, the lighting actually destroys this, but you can see, it's, it actually says, the sheriff is a fat pig, but his daughter is hot, which is our little testament to Helen. I like how daughter spells. Good. Yeah, daughter spell. Yeah, these are intentional misspellings, so I don't feel bad. It's not like Bureau. That's, yeah, why, like that's Bureau. why I asked, he's like, you know, sometimes it's... Uh... Not safe, the league. Uh, this is a shame because it says something. I actually wrote like a chain of graffiti. Yeah. You know how you know how you see graffiti in in like bathrooms where someone's written something, and then someone's written a comment under it, and then someone else has written a comment. I actually wrote a chain of graffiti, and this is not come through very clearly here. So you only see your mother. This screen is pretty dark. Like normally you see it better. On Say no to graffiti. Very important. Some kids laugh and some kids cry, but mostly children simply die. I'd be freaked out if I <laughs> saw if I and saw so that graffiti. 1980s, this was a bit, we were being subtle. Are you better off than you were four years ago, Reagan? That was his campaign slogan in the <laughs> 80s. Don't believe anything they tell you. That was originally the first line she said in the game. And it, oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was, it, was be be it came when the fun, it said Funcom presents and then you heard her say, don't believe anything they tell you. I was like, eh, might not work. <laughs> Fear the boogeyman, stop picking your nose then. See, there it kind of works, but yeah, we did more stuff. I actually implemented the entire pill trip myself, which was fun. Um, and so over time, you get more and more stoned in the pill trip. Originally, it had a timer so that it kicked you out after a certain amount of time. Here, I was learning how to make physics objects react to players. Um, there's a lot of medical symbology here, which obviously I'm sure people will understand if they've played the game through. Different things. Yeah. I actually had a lot of fun playing bowling with that... Uh, that pile of bears there. This is. I wanted to do a matrix thing here. I was just testing it. The matrix bears. Yeah. Beom, 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 beom. <laughs> so yeah, it was yeah. it was cool, and and we wanted to make this feel just a little bit Don't off and a little bit weird. And there's there's a there's a thing here that I think people don't get. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. Some people were like, I, I've taken drugs similar to what, you know, the people in this take. And these are, the way that's portrayed is ridiculous. Like, it's, it's a full-on pill trip and, you know, the world changes. It's actually a reverse pill trip. And, I'm, and, and this is the thing that's interesting, is this is parts of the real world. I'm spoiling, spoiling a lot of things here. Mm. This is parts of the real world po poking into Lorraine's delusion here. So you are seeing things that are from the real world. That's why when she takes the pill, she's in a cell. That's why when she walks outside, there's there's medical objects floating around. It's not it's not that she is taking pills and having a trip. It's that she's taking pills and they're stabilizing her to a certain extent, right? And that is really important. That's an important distinction that was way too subtle. Yeah. And that's a failure on the storytelling side on my end. That's a lesson learned, right? I was far too subtle with what, what was actually going yeah, that on. Wasn't, that if you need the creative yeah. actor to tell you directly what's happening, it's usually because it's <laughs> a little bit too subtle. Exactly. But now you know. <laughs> subtle thing. <laughs> Great. Fun. And then there's this, right? And this is something that I think a lot of TSW players find interesting. The newspaper. Now when you read it, it's Future Times by Laurel and Howdy. Belly Button is the signature of your personal creator. I believe her name was Mama. Every 17th child is a magnet for sinfulness, made omniscient by broken fires in the coastal strain. We don't believe that the earth belongs to battered goats and shamrock afterbirth. Only the truly naked wrens of righteous indignation are severed by war-crossed cleavages in trust to exercise arrhythmias. Arrhythmia. Beaumont will come to the island, bearing the talisman, and he will shatter the seals that bind the orthodoxy of corruption. Only then will priests shoot, sluts reveal, housewives pontificate, and delayed messiahs make axles for the rescue of Tango and Cash. Sweet the temptress who grips the shaft, twists the shaft, absconding with third aged something? Third aged, I can't even remember. I can't even read it either. <laughs> absconding with third aged something into fourth aged darkness while gods lie writhing on the shattered face of the earth. Gaia has sweetness and grace, but her days are numbered and heavy fisted hives break before frozen wills and calligraphic actresses in pencil and paper pornography. The all-seeing eye will provide decade-long updates on this story going forward. I'm not going to explain all of that, because obviously... But there's a the paragraph in the middle is the events that occur on, mm -hmm. on Solomon Island, or the, the two paragraphs in the middle. The rest of it, a lot of people are going to have to figure out. The very first line, though, 
<laughs> comes from the 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 classic, completely insane website, which is for. Oh come on, the four cubed, the cube. Uh, you you guys don't know I'm the crazy website. Oh my god, I can't remember it. I, I, I share another one you're talking about. You know the one I'm talking the, about? Um, it's, it's an entire website written, yes. like written in crazy yeah, caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like an amazing thing. Time Cube. The Time Cube the time website. Cube, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think the I the very about, first yeah. line is from that. So for people who are speculating about what significance that line has, it really just has oh, wow, me right. throwing in a reference to one of my favorite conspiracy websites. You don't even re- recognize it's it. It's great writing material. And uh, yeah, so that was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed putting that together. <laughs> so that was cool. And, yeah, there's a lot of hints there for players who, who know mm-hmm. how to look and where to look for them. Um, so we're going to keep moving along. Yeah, I love... But it is something, like, you know, we talk about, like, going back as well to, like, you know, design lessons. It's something which is so difficult to do in video games is whenever you touch at um, a subject that... Um, that a minority will be experts. Uh, oh, yeah. About, like, you know, it, it's it's very common, like, you know, when we do games, we try to... We try to talk about any subject that we can, try to make cool story about it, and trying to be uh, respectful of the stories that we t- that we talked about. But it's very, very common that the people who actually really know about this subject, you know, for whom it's it might be the daily life. Um, their first reaction is to be very defensive and you know potentially get offended. And it, it's it's really not. I won't say our intention. But I won't say our intention. Almost as game designers, you know, we tend to try and we do our research. You know, sometimes we even know those effect first hands, but. Uh, whatever you're talking about, like everybody has a different reaction to it, and it's it's either you stay away from it completely, or you try to you know to to either yeah. and, raise and I mean, awareness. Or I mean, on, on the other side of it, I've had feedback do. from a lot of people who've been through what Lorraine's been through. Mm-hmm. Not obviously to yeah. the extent, and it goes Lorraine's both ways. It really and, and I've gotten feedback from people who really enjoyed it. And one of the developers on the team experienced all of this as well. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not like it, we're not being impersonal. We're certainly not trying to do this for entertainment purposes and actually or sorry not cheap entertainment purposes for me it's about raising awareness something that my my um <laughs> that would like for example have made marketing happier was if this was just a jump Mark scare horror game like without any deeper thought own. behind it because Millions it would it would probably sell better because journalists don't think too hard about games that like if you sell a game as like this is a blood and gore jump scare game he they don't then look for any deeper meaning, but because yeah. we tried to add a layer, I love walk this away with cinema. This, this cents worth of mass-produced well. oh Chinese teddy bears while a grinning yeah. carny yeah. pockets your hard-earned five dollars. And what secrets are close to the end? So as we approach the, the gaping maw of madness, I was thinking maybe time for the raffle. Yeah, we might as well do the raffle. Let's start it. So, we're going to be giving away one more copy of The Park. Um, go ahead and type exclamation point raffle in Twitch chat, and we'll get that going for you. There's absolutely a ton of secrets, by the way, that I haven't looked at. Like, you know, It really is. I mean, there was, yeah, the there was boogie, something the happening at the top. on the roof of the... Which is mouth when you first enter and all that sort of stuff watching you. And yes, well, it is. It, it's again, it goes back into like you know people talking about the game not really having a replayability. It's like sure, there's the the plain story that is obvious from fairly early on in the game, but then you have everything everything around the park, like everything what you know about the, the the history of the parks, like and and of the other characters and everything. Like, it's really worth discovering and making sure you you find all of those media pop-ups who tell like really are uh, the. If, if it's interesting, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, for me, it was like one playthrough is fine if people want to play through mm. it once. It's not. It wasn't never designed to be a super replayable game. Like that's for sure. But I, uh, I there is there's stuff there details. to look for. That's yeah. What what are you done to with say. Just, there's a lot of details into and, it. They really. And I realized I hadn't shouted for a while. So the rain's tone that? of voice. I mean, she's starting to just <laughs> unravel as you enter the house of horrors. I mean, and you really hear it in her voice. She's not consistent at all. A lot of stuff she says just doesn't make sense. Um, done. Atlantic Island Park has closed its gate. A jeering throng of townsfolk gathered as we hung the heavy iron padlock on the gates. Small-minded fools, scared of what they don't understand. My machines lie silent and dejected, but I am not beaten. I have sent my wife and son back to Boston, and I have retreated here to the House of Horrors. I must think. Winter's story continues, even as Lorraine's story heats up. So, um, the House of Horrors. This section 
was where we were linear. And this mm-hmm. is where we really, really are able to ratchet things up super tight. Like, the, the park outside is more open spaces. Here, when you narrow things down and you start putting in tighter features, it's, it's really easy to ratchet up tension. Actually, horror is surprisingly easy to do when you, when you control the circumstances completely and utterly. Um, I just wanted to give a shout-out to our render coders here. Unreal doesn't have, or it doesn't have very nice rend- mirror rendering tech. Um, and so we weren't able to find a native solution. So our render team in the last two weeks before launch added the mirrors to the House of Horrors mirror. Um, mirror maze, which really, really helped. <laughs> the, I always forget about the jump scares in here. A lot of people <laughs> gave feedback that uh, the jump scares in the House of Horrors feel kind of cheap. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> You're in a fun Have house. you ever been, <laughs> to, <laughs> have you ever been to the cheap... The cheap Four, like, fun houses, that's exactly what I'll it. confess, the first pop-up when you walk in got oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it got a lot of people, actually. They get I remember, people. Yeah, yeah. I watched a lot of streams, it was funny. Just yeah, yeah, I was talking it. with a friend of mine in, uh, in downtown, and uh, she agreed that, like, yeah, that jump scare, mm. the first, like, mm. pop-up, like, really got her. We, yeah. we haven't been, <laughs> a, like, the game isn't about jump scares a lot right. of the time, up until this point. And then here, we're like, there's a ton of jump scares, because this is where they belong. Yeah. It's one of the things, I think, maybe... <laughs> As developers, we hamper ourselves a little bit by being almost... We try to be almost more realistic than we should. So, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't have jump scares everywhere. We should have them in the House of Horrors, where it means something to have jump scares. And a lot of people who play Secret World will recognize, of course, these uh, wonderful the cutouts. Speeches, yeah. And these have been upgraded a little bit for the for the park to make their graphics fidelity, not blurry. But yeah. One other thing I wanted to say about those jump scares, actually, I, I watch a lot of streamers. Like, I think one of the reaction that's great about them is people get very annoyed for actually being yeah. um, affected by them Cheesy. because, like, you know they're coming; it's obvious, and then yeah, you feel like such a fool. It's like, ah, oh, you know, despite knowing it, I still, I still jumped. Still did it. Yeah. It's exactly. it's good. I like it. Hey, so we have a winner for a raffle as well. Uh, congratulations to Darkside Twenty Three. Darkside. Darkside. Hooray. Hooray. So uh, yeah, we'll get uh, we'll get you uh, a copy of the park. Uh, we're just gonna need your email address. We'll message you in just a bit. Congratulations. Is Thanks, it Darkside guys. with an X? Yes. Uh huh. Hi, Darkside. Cool. I recognize people's names. So yeah, this is like the most subtle. Regulars. This is the most subtle <laughs> non jump scare in the game. Look, there's that guy. Walk in here. <gasps> He's rotated slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I gave the I give the designer who made that so much shit about it. And I, I, I know I'm an asshole, but that was really fun. <laughs> I feel bad actually. I've never noticed it until <laughs> no it just is like because oh, no uh, one ever notices yeah. it. It's like that one's a little more obvious. But yeah, <laughs> it's kind of. I know. Um, this one's cool because for me, this one I'm always like, it's gonna jump. But when is it gonna jump? And I'm like, uh, uh, and I do this, <laughs> and it jumps like. And I never expect it because sometimes I've walked past it and it hasn't gone off. Mm. And it's like a bit random when that one times. So you kind of expect it and then it does it anyway and you, you jump. So you know the funny thing that happened to me with that particular goat? Um, <laughs> I was goat. I kept like I I kept shouting for Callum and then she has this particular line where where Callum <gasps> replies like, you know, behind you. Yeah. And then oh, um, yeah. And then every single time like, I expect something to happen, it's like behind you, nothing is happening. It's like, oh, Callum, you know, you little shit, like to, uh, to call Lorraine. And then at some point, I was standing, I happened to be standing next to that thing, facing away from it, and he, he said behind you, I turned around and the stuff popped in my face. I really, like, almost fell off my chair. And I'm like, no, I'm not joking. It really, really got me. I was, and I asked Joel, I was like, really, did you, like, script all this? I was like, no, it just happened to be in the right place at the right time, but it really, really got me. Which is cool. It was it was awesome. Like I like this. Uh... Great. So moving forward now, this is the coolest. Yeah. <laughs> I really like this. this. Is where everything goes nuts. I right? really yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like the boogeyman here. He's just so fun. It's like. Okay, the animations are really cool for him. Yeah. The way he just backs into yeah. the door and closes. Yeah, so and the clown is really cool. I mean, the guys put that in. It actually used to be a lot more places than I said. It's a mm-hmm. bit too much having it too often. But here is where it really works. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Do you want to show maybe the, the Boogeyman right now? Because it's really like the... Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the last Boogeyman time concept? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Let's pull it up. for you in just one sec. So, so show you what? Let's go here uh, real quick. 
Let's get out of it. So Our concepts. We're gonna close with that. We're gonna show off the boogeyman. There you go. Boogie. This is the new and improved boogeyman. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Jenny took the concept we had for the boogeyman with the older concept from the secret world and he's you know he's a little worn around the edges in a modern day you know kind of you know it's been three years since he, since secret world came out so yeah he's a little bit worn around the edges so we uh, we decided to upgrade him and so she did the concept on the left first and then she said you know I don't like his face I want to do more with his mm-hmm. face and so she's on the right you see the different iterations of his face um, just making him fleshy and you know making the flesh hang loose and creepy i mean he's a great guy he enjoyed like he's a happy yeah. man look how smart look at his smile and those beautiful teeth how could you say no to that his yeah. teeth are yeah. so plan. interesting it looks uh you get to get like a proper look at him like uh in the uh, in the final cutscene that we'll get to fairly yeah. shortly so you'll be able to like look at those concepts on the on the right like in particular the last one i think is uh, kind of the I love him. I wish I wish we'd had time to like do sort of physics animation on his oh, face, like, like you know? so that yeah, yeah his yeah, face yeah. just hung and was all fleshy. But we didn't have. To, he could be like me, have six chins and <laughs> hide it with a beard. I could just put you in the mocap studio. <laughs> 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 Mr. Jar Jar Binks. No, 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 no. Let's not go there. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going back to the game now. Let's continue. There you go. And uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Yeah. Fail and win. Winning. Alright. Cool. <laughs> Somebody swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> deary, deary me. Okay, so we're descending now. So this is where her torch stops working, I believe, somewhere here. Alright. So this is the first of many layers of this apartment that we'll run through. Um, Nightmare Circus by Fancom. <laughs> now, those of you who I know, wonder what company that is. No, those of you who know yeah. their... Know their the way it comes from here. Yeah. People yeah. who know their Funcom history will that know is that. A, a Nightmare Circus story. is a, a Nintendo Entertainment... Uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System game released by Funcom. Huh. Back in the day. I was not aware of this. In and a this, long time. This it's blurb really, on it's this one book... one of our first games. And yeah. the cover of this book are, are based on the original cover art. Mm-hmm. And uh, the blurb on the book is the blurb from the game. Well, sort of. I changed it a little bit. A circus burns to the ground on opening night, killing dozens. The owner is put to death by an enraged mob of townsfolk, just as he shouts out a curse. Now Raven, a dark-souled wanderer, comes to the ruins at dusk in search of his missing mother. Let the show begin. Now Nightmare Circus has a very interesting reputation, because I believe it only ever got released in South America. And anybody who wanted to play it in the West had to get a import a version yeah, yeah. and then th- it has a reputation that it's unbeatable After as well they let me out they gave me Callum so, huh. back and sent mm. me home with a handful of breadcrumbs there's Mr. Bear that's some fun trivia home bit of sweet I also home. like the uh, reference to the, uh, the one of the or- uh, orange subsidies yeah yeah where there had been color yeah. and light there were shadows and regrets where there had been warmth there was a bone deep coldness that never went away I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay Lorraine's life is not going well Dawn Watching from the dusty corners while I try to teach his son to read. Yeah, some uh, some people on Twitch chat Arden, actually bring up a really interesting point too, because uh, like lacking. there's so many like this is where I notice a ton of references to like the secret world, right? Like you see tons me. of books from like Sam Creed, for example. They said, Every right? Day will be a there were. Better. There were. Okay, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, speaking, yeah, so I'm speaking right now. Then no, no, you probably played an earlier version, right? I must have. Yeah, you played before launch. Um, the artist threw in a bunch of Sam Creed books that we had in Secret World, and I played the game. Played the game, sorry, and didn't think about it. Yeah. And then, like, I was like, wait a minute, we have all the publication dates for the Sam Creed books. And then I went and checked, and I was like, no, 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 they can't be in here, it's out of the time frame. Uh, it's it's, oh, uh, it's I see. after this happened. So then like we had to. Time re- paradox. Yeah, yeah, so okay, then, I, right. then I was like, damn it, we have my, to fix all the books. Then. Okay. No, no, you're, you're right, though. Like, there was all of the Sam Creed books were in here. As like books with blurbs on the back, yeah, 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 and and they progressed in the same way that the books do. So you were one hundred percent right. But that was a version that we didn't okay. launch to the public because I realised that law. Failed. My mistake. Sorry about yeah. that. No, no, cool. It's cool trivia. Rubik's cube. There's a guy. This is a, interesting. There's a guy at work who's obsessed with Rubik's cubes in, yeah. in Oslo, and he plays. He has a Rubik's cube on his desk, and he can solve it in less than a minute, like from any configuration. He can do the algorithms and solve it. And so I thought, yeah, this would be cool. Let's, let's put a Rubik's Cube in and, and make a puzzle, or not a puzzle around it, but make a message hidden in it. 
So we did that. Scrib goes, maybe we should write these books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scrib, let's do it, baby. Bam. I've already written it. Uh, uh, so in case you're new in this channel, Scrib, Scrib no is the, um, the lead writer of The Secret World. And yes. Uh, and you, one of the regular members of the streaming ones are Friday streams, but uh, we have a special edition here today. Oh, this is fun. I wrote this one. <laughs> This is amazing, like the way it escalates is awesome. Miss Maylard, as we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you fully recovered from your illness. This letter is to a, is official notification that you are considered sound of mind and body and may return to work at any time. Please note that you should discontinue any medication that you've been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time that you are suffering a relapse, please make contact with your local physician immediately. We wish you continued good health. Dr. Spencer, Dunwich Medical. Dunwich Emergency Service, yes. Dunwich being the town that's just across the from Solomon on the mainland, right? This is a letter uh, from Lorraine's mother. Lorraine, I received your letter and I'm quite surprised. You ran off with your father all of those years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map. And then, when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters. And now you write to me asking for help. I have another family now, and another life. Your father was a horrible man and I regret the years that I wasted with him. I loved you. I truly did. But every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl, never really mine. Still, I would have fought for, you, for custody if you hadn't run away with him. It broke my heart, but I needed to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Lorraine, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day it will be easier, and I can meet Callum. But not yet. I am not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact me again. Karen. So, Lorraine's obviously reached out to her mother. There's more to the story, though, and we'll find out more of that as we, we go a little deeper. <sighs> this oh, this is, is such a hard one to, uh, Miss, to read. Miss Maylard, our inquiry into the estate of Mr. Donald Williams has been completed. We regret to inform you that the primary beneficiaries of his estate, including the life insurance settlement for accidental death, were listed as Rose Williams and Richard Williams of New York State, the deceased parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explained your situation, especially as regards the birth of Donald's son, Callum. Unfortunately, they were not receptive to our overtures, and they specified that without any legal proof of, biolog of a biological relationship, they consider you ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. They've asked that we no longer contact them regarding this matter. I understand that this may have a negative impact on your current financial situation, and I hope that I am not being too forward when I enclose the bill for our services with this letter. Sincerely, Edward Stapleton. Yay. This is not the letter you want to receive, ever. Nope. No. Edward Stapleton is also a lawyer in Edgar Allan Poe story. Um, just in case anyone knows, wants to know where we get names. And uh, yeah, there you go. It's tough, man. She has... <laughs> things aren't going well. No. I, I really... Yeah. Yeah, it, it's actually... I feel like a dick when I watch people stream this and, and there's so many people who have like 100% empathy and that like they feel for Lorraine and I'm like I made her up but I know it's horrible I put her in a horrible situation she does not leave any my thing is what makes her such an interesting character though yeah, it's yeah. like it's, you don't get there many are, games who have those characters even movies like it's kind of a, there are people who are in tough situations yeah. man. I, like, my, like my wife is a child psychologist right she works with this stuff she works with the parents she works with people, and I, you know, I obviously, you know, I can't. She can't talk to me about a lot of this stuff, but she can give me general, yeah, things, and like it's it's so tough. Well, that's a lot of weight on her shoulders. Yeah, too, yeah, and, she, and she's tough, that, and, yeah. and you know, I was talking to her all the way through this, and oh, yeah, it was just it was tough, man. Okay, so this is some stuff that people need to think about, right? And something that I haven't seen our law people, who usually are one hundred percent on top of things. These books progressed. The park it was a wait, wait, waitin' on a child for take, take, taken. Using joy for bait, bait, baitin' while their mother's mind is break, break, breaking. Or oh, the mother's mind is breaking. Analgesia <laughs> win. So, anyone who knows what analgesia is, um, yeah, probably has some clue as to what's going on here. 
Uh, here's something I noticed. I've, I've watched a lot of people streaming this game. I think a lot of people like saw the cover of his books again and never really thought about looking at uh, the progression of the text. Like a lot of people realize it a bit, a little bit too late. I mean, I think it's something interesting for us to take as well as designers and to like you know, it's feedback. in a way it's a little bit of a high failure that people did not see that progression. But it was something interesting. It's just like oh, I've seen this item already. I've seen this item already. I'm not going to click it. And it's uh, it's got, a shame because it should have uh, gone all poltergeist and had the books fire at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think even like you know turning them over, so yeah. like the first thing you see is the back. I think may have helped yeah. too. We we'll see a little bit of that later on. So, right? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy crazy stuff. Stuff. yeah, some yeah, of them yeah, are yeah. a lot more obvious later on. Yeah. But I think people, you know, they don't necessarily realize it's like oh, you missed out like yeah, in, in yeah. the first few iteration of the house who wasn't completely messed up this yet. Is, this is a letter from Don, her mm -hmm. partner. Lorraine, things aren't right between us at the moment. I know I want to try and explain it. I think it is because I am so far from home and I'm working so hard. Every day working at the park gets worse, like a spring inside my mind, winding tighter and tighter and tighter. When we go for drinks after work, it gets a little better. The guys relax and we laugh and we're, we're good people again. I don't want to come home to you without being in my right mind. But when this job is done, we need to get out of this place. We need to go back to the city, where I don't feel like this anymore. I love you, Donald. P.S. I was thinking about names for boys and girls. I like Callum for a boy, and Emma if it is a girl. <laughs> and I'm saying nothing. Nothing. Hunger. The story of... Oh, did I skip that book earlier? I must have. Mm. The first book is the story of the donor party. Yeah, so this is highlighting again the themes of Hansel and Gretel a little bit, the hunger thing. I think, it, I don't want to go too, too deeply into it, but there's a, a definite hunger relationship, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to love between mother and child and things like that. The wilting. Uh, yeah, so as this as we, you go through, Lorraine starts coming through more. There's a message here from, from certain entities, QBL Publishing, Publish all the books, by the way. People don't remember QBL. You should, if you don't. <laughs> this is the Rubik's Cube. Now it has letters on it. Now it has letters. But there's Callum, we finally caught him. The Come end. Come me look at <laughs> He was home. He was home the entire time. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> and then he runs away. Milk, cheese, bread, butter, corn, potatoes, apples, fish sticks, Zolift prescription, take the pills, follow up with Dr. Spencer, organize babysitter for Callum. Very important. I don't know if that text ever made it in, but Norma Creed used to babysit Callum for the rain. Oh, I don't know if that's I actually... Was not aware of that. uh, she, yeah, it is mentioned somewhere. Yeah, I, I can't remember where Unless you told me, but I'm pretty sure it... it... No, you find, you find out in the game. Yeah, good. Yeah, so Lorraine's mother... She didn't run away, her father stole her, basically took her when she was a teenager away from her. I think it's just oh, I think she offers some help when now. she said, yeah, I think that's, that's what it's saying. Sorry? She says, I can keep Callum again, like, when we'll get some help. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that. So one. this is all very interesting too, because I kind of on the note of like the the, the version that I had played, or like oh, you can go ahead if you, if you want to read that. Oh, this is just like the Dumbwich Emergency Services. So yeah, just, they had a, a letter about her suffering from depression. That was why she was checked in after birth. Yeah, oh, this is the one actually so, about Norma Creed. We're talking about underneath. Oh uh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. Cool. Norma Creed, a local woman, mm. yeah, has offered. So yeah, I skipped this in the first round. Thank you, William, for the new watches. Very nice and has made me a happy carrot. Good old. And then, <laughs> this was the art director had a lot of fun one evening. Yeah. Because I said to him, I gave him the original. Yeah. And I said, Hey, five levels of progression. Have fun. And he was like, Okay. So he Great. started. Yeah. He started drawing stuff, and he's as twisted as I am, unfortunately. So ended up with a pretty cool. Yeah. Thing. I remember. So like, kind of on a like a, the the on trivia like pre-release stuff. I I remember one of the books that was something that you could read was also something about postpartum depression, which kind of ties into that. Yeah. Yeah. But that was really. Hey, that yeah. that was a really heavy thing when we, I remember seeing that. I was like, oh man. Like, we, yeah. we we pulled it out. Yeah. Because we thought like it was very obvious. Mm. Right. It was like it's like you know there's a book that says postpartum depression. Like why are you saying this out out loud? Let yeah. people draw well, a conclusion. Kind of like drove the drove the point home kind of yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. the yeah. Exactly. Subtext. It, it yeah, talks yeah. about it right. Like and and postpartum depression is it's terrible. It's way more common than you think. Like it's one in a thousand women 
in, a, in which it escalates to psychosis, mm-hmm. which is obviously where this goes. But postpartum depression in general is like very, it, it affects like one in four women. It's, it's crazy. And it doesn't just affect one in four women. Like most women have some of the, some of the side effects of it, right? So it's, it's very, it's a very prevalent thing. And when you are a parent and people don't tell you about this stuff, like people expect you to be happy all the time. People expect, like people are like, oh, you just had a baby, the miracle of life. And like, you're not sleeping. You, you're, you're giving like your breast to the child all the time. Like it, there's so much pressure from everybody around mm-hmm. you. And also you feel like people are judging you. Like there's this whole like, am I a good mother? Man, it's, it's the toughest time in people's lives and they have, yeah, it's really hard for them. It's really hard. And I had no idea when I, would, when I became a father what, 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 that this even existed, right? And I think the gaming crowd, especially the secret, secret world crowd, are quite mature and have, like, people understand, right? But, like, there's a lot of people who have never encountered this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I didn't want to make a game about... Um, I didn't want to make a game about demonizing people who have this, even sure. though this game goes to a really dark place. Right. I wanted to make a game about, like, holy shit, this exists? I want people to know... And for me, that's really important. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and sort of my wife, uh, I got her to play through it and like give me feedback and right, kind of important stuff here. Yeah. Uh, Chipmunk goes a stab, stab, stabbing in the eyes a jab, jab, jabbing. All the townies gab, gab, gabbing. Just lie down and let it happen. Basal ganglia win. So, some people ask me what Chad's purpose in the game is. Does anyone know what the basal ganglia is? You probably do. I'm pretty smart. I don't. No, I'm not smart. I'm not smart. I'm not smart. It's, I'm sorry. it's basically the, the the primal part of the brain. Oh right. Okay. I was thinking characters, so, whatever. So I'm thinking huge spoilers. Like huge spoilers. Like lots of people ask what Chad is. Now, if you take this whole thing as Lorraine's delusion, then what is Chad? Chad is her primal instinct. Mm. Chad never threatens her. Chad never ever does anything to her apart from shows up at times when she would be emotional in a in a very primal way flight or flight moments right um except on the on the on the boat ride when you see him he's just there in the background right, he's right, a part right, of right. your background while you're hearing a story that has dark undertones right in the side show alley when you see him you've just seen a dead body mm-hmm. at least in her delusion and he's there right it's it's like that fight or flight moment in everybody's mind and that's why chad is there and people ask what's he doing in the final cutscene what's he doing there the final cutscene is where everything comes full circle, sure. and it's 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 that moment. And what's interesting is, not everyone's seen the final cutscene either. Yeah, we can get to yeah, that. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, so this is the actual Hansel and Gretel story, but this is more the the real story, right? Like so, <laughs> in this never never before seen expose, read about how their parents inexpertly tried to cover it up by telling stories about a witch and a house made of candy, all here in the pages of this shocking fake story. This is about the real... Oh, I bumped the table again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joel! Ramon's so like, no. <laughs> I feel so bad, Ramon. I'm so sorry. And now the hat has blood, which is nasty. And now there's words. Her lie. Bye-bye. You can see. When you see oh, it correct. completely, we can read all of them. See her try. Like in yeah. the final version. Uh. So does Twitch chat have any other questions that they'd like to ask uh, while we're moving through some of this stuff? Just I'm going to I'm gonna jump ahead a bit. Oh, but I think the, the chat thing was another interesting thing because even internally, like, it sort of came across, like, you know, between, like, people not really understanding him. And it's, again, it, a very, very difficult thing to do. I think it really belongs in the game. Like, it's very important. So showing this kind of a... Um, this part of Lorraine, which is, like, I, mean, I think a part that everybody has, you know, like, your your... Your, your darker side and the fact that he's represented physically again it's something which is difficult to do you know was that done right in the game it's kind of a it's, oh, it, it's very subjective to me it doesn't um, matter right like that's the thing I have a reason for why Chad should be there and that's enough yeah I, I know man <laughs> I, I agree I agree with you but I think it's important for people like it's a shame that sometimes it misleads people as much as it does right now yeah. like it's kind of a uh, I kind of wish as people finish the game, like everybody sort of, you know, sat down and say, oh, okay, that's, that's who that was, rather than leaving it as an open question. Yeah. Um, and the sure. clues are in there, and, you know, I'm, I, I hope that, you know, this was news. Like, I hope some of you guys figured it out already, and I hope it was news to a few of you, because I think it really gives you that different perspective to, uh, yeah, absolutely. to the entire and, game. Like, it's and not, I, I will talk about the, 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 there's one more theme in the park that I haven't mentioned at all, and I'll talk about after we finish the end. 
um, which will hopefully. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm looking at the time and going, wow, we've been here for two, two hours. I told you, like, and we started the stuff. I told you, like, you know, we're going to talk. It's probably going to be I'm around like, two I'm hours. It's like, nah. like we've been done for the minutes. I've played through this game it's like five hundred times. You know, the four hundred hours worth. Of <laughs> All right, so but it's going uh, on. Right. On the same it's note, good to be right. A boogeyman goes a walk, walk, walking. <laughs> Sneaking, stealing, a stalk, stalk, stalking. Is he really talk, talk, talking? Now is not the time for balking. Cerebral Shop cortex, man. Yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> tapping the table again. Cerebral cortex. So, people know what the cerebral cortex is. So then you should have some idea of what the boogeyman is. And what he represents in the game. At least on some level, right? Like, there's... And then, <laughs> the woodcutter is dead, the witch always wins. The woodcutter is dead, the witch always wins. All here in the pages of this broken story. So now we've taken that theme, you know, towards its logical conclusion. Here you have the message starting to break through with, Can you hear us, Lorraine? A sun will, cattle, shadow, like, voices start breaking through. People who play Secret World will recognize them. People who don't play Secret World, that actually is pretty much a direct homage to the Secret World, so, uh, homage to the Secret World. So they won't, they might not see that at all. Um, but that's fine. Like it's kind of, I don't mind giving Secret World players something for themselves. Yeah, you are alone. Nobody loves you. Callum is no longer who he once was. It's really important for her to remember. And then there's a baby in the oven because why not? So Summer brings up an interesting question. Uh, they're wondering about the overall like cannibalism theme. Uh, if that's something you can comment on, if, if there's supposed to be a lot of focus on it, and if they're supposed to be, or if that theme was supposed to be taken literally. Not literally. Not literally. Yeah. That was so interesting because actually something mm. that never came across, I was watching uh, some streamers, actually some, some fairly uh, uh, well-known streamers playing this game, and he came on very early on, like straight from the, 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 the swan, um, boat sections like they joked about it saying oh you know she probably ate Callum but then there were so many clues in the game that reinforced them into this idea that you know when they saw the baby into the oven we was like oh well she definitely ate Callum and they were like you know what games are we playing like it's about a mother eating a child and I was like it's it's I, I kept seeing them reinforce this idea with all these little clues that you know were misinterpreted but it was so good it's uh it's funny, like it's. I wish we caught it earlier, but it uh, it, it adds a layer to the game. It makes it a lot darker than uh, than it could have been. <laughs> I mean, the the cannibalism thing is. This is one of my favorite. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this this was fun to write too. I have to say. It's horrible. Miss Maylard, as we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you to be batshit fucking insane. Let's be clear, you are in no way sound of mind and body, and you are a danger to everybody around you. Please Stop note that big. Please note that your only escape from this Rachel. should be drugs. A shitload of them, smoking, snorting, oral, intravenous, take them any way you can and as often as you can. That shit can only make your life better. In case there was any doubt, you are suffering a relapse and nobody really cares. Nobody can help you now. Don't fuck this up, Dr. Spock, Dunwich Medical. Now, two things there. Who do you think of when you think of Dr. Spock? Uh... The Star Trek guy. Right? Oh, right, right, well, yeah. But there's a there's a series of books called Doctor Spock's Children, children books, and they're about child health, and huh. they're written by a guy called Doctor Spock, and they were hugely famous in the seventies oh. as guides for parents about children. He's a smart man. He does so, his research. So it's not just that Doctor Spock, but uh, hey, it's a good reference because it ki- yeah. picks it picks up the sixty year olds, the forty year olds, yeah. the thirty year olds, yeah. and you know the teenagers we don't care about. No, I'm joking. Have you seen the new? This is the new, uh, <laughs> the new Star Trek movies. Yeah, they, they've seen this. the new Star Trek. They, they're like, oh yeah, Doctor Spock. Everyone, that's the guy from Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in chat is commenting that they, uh, they really commend you on uh, how accurate that last uh, letter was <laughs> to how real life is. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we, we, of course, we don't mean to, you know, make light of any hardships that you had, but. Uh, well, yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty messed up. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's I think everybody went through these things sometimes how you feel, and it's oh. interesting to see, like, you know, this is how you, you, know, you would see it written. It's Yeah, it's it's like, I, I think the the thing that, yeah, it's like, ugh, life's tough, man. It's yeah, not easy. Yeah. It's no game. Like, it's, yeah, I, I mean, like, you got to be happy with the things that are good in your life because, I mean, there's so much bad as well. It's like, it's life is a... 
Life is uncertainty, I guess that's the way I would put it. Challenge comes and you've got to be able to roll with it, learn how to deal with it. And I think we reached the final... Uh, this is the final level. The final version of the, of the apartments. So. so who's saying this then? And this is the interesting part, right? We've been talking about the different brain states. Lorraine, Lorraine, <laughs> I need you to focus on, focus on what we're discussing. Joel, I will cut your hand off. The chipmunk killer, <laughs> Steve Gardner. He was locked away for what he did to the kids. Nathaniel Winter hasn't been seen in years, but he is nowhere near Atlantic Island Park. We've established this. You know this. So who's talking to her now? A shrink? Mm. Maybe. Mm. Someone she's talking to. Or has been talking to. Mm. There's definitely someone reaching out to her, right? Mm. And trying to break through, so yeah. Are you talking about actually missed out on Oh no, that's when well, I was I was thinking about a friend. I was just passing. I think yeah. you missed one of the depot pups, but Oh yeah. we missed we missed a couple. Yeah. That's all right. My two best friends, Dawn and Laura. Some people were speculating that Dawn and Laura might have been sleeping around on her, but that's not true. That's not, that was never part of Good the, to know. That was, never, <laughs> that was never part of the idea. The idea was that just she took a photo of her, her, her boyfriend and her best friend together. Which people do. Which people <laughs> do. Yeah. And it doesn't mean... Do yeah. You see the center of this book cover, which has Lorraine's face and an eye, right? This was actually the original cover art for the game. And we did a bunch of testing, um, so we made we made a bunch of key art. We had six different images. It's not the act like the whole thing is not the cover art. The idea of the eye. But we had the idea of the eye with her face and stuff. We took six different images. We put them on Facebook for a couple of days on ads. And when you click the ads, it just took you to the park game website and said and had the coming soon. So it wasn't like you could buy anything, but you could click the ads. And we tested the click through rates. And the chipmunk suit guy, which because I saw some people on the forums who were like, oh, the chipmunk suit guy is a bit weird advertising wise. But actually, that got like a ratio of I think it was seven times more clicks than the nearest huh. competitor of the six images that we put up on Facebook. So we went with that for our key art because, from a marketing standpoint, that's the right thing to do. It attracts a lot of people. I mean, it, it makes you it makes you wonder what it what it so so people what it could be about people who say Funko marketing does a terrible job. No, they did a fantastic job with the park, and we had zero marketing budget on the park. Mm. Like we did not spend any money at all, and the park had huge pickup, has more than a hundred reviews. 10 million views on YouTube. It's just, it's huge. And we didn't do any it was good for this. paid advertising. So, I mean, yeah. it's great. Give credit where it's due. It's definitely due. So, our marketing guys did amazing. Um, we're talking, can you hear us, Lorraine? The killing. A son will be devoured. All the cattle will be enslaved. This shadow lies on your future, our domination. If you listen, Lorraine, you are key to damning the world. We are irrepressible. You can only join us, Lorraine. Lorraine, we are one. Anybody who's played The Secret World knows what that is. That's Josh talking to people. <laughs> That's Josh. <sighs> Our Rubik's Cube. See her try, see her lie, see him die, see her cry. Say bye bye. Ask her why. Right. We're coming to the end? <laughs> yes. Our producer is <laughs> late. <laughs> We're getting close to the end. We're wasting too much time. There's, we're there's getting, one of yeah, our fantastic... We're getting greets from the producer and the head of marketing. Head of marketing just <laughs> walked past after I said such nice things about it. Yeah! And what a great job That's we great. did. So we're going to... I'm going to... Well, people we're very hungry. close now, anyway. Are people hungry? I think, I think that's what it is. Whoa! Random. Uh, I blame myself. No, I should. Alright, so we're, let's wrap it up. We're going to run through uh, to the end. We're very close. I'll talk about this section. By the way, the sound design in here, off the hook. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. these guys did a good job. Shout out to Simon Paul for composing really the soundtrack really nice. as well. Yeah, Simon. yeah the, the soundtrack for the park went up on Spotify mm -hmm. yesterday as well. So you can just go on Spotify. I linked it on Twitter. You can go into Spotify, look for the soundtrack. Blah, blah, blah. Check so, it out. So what I really wanted to do here, I'll talk about Stories that after she told says her again bit. and again, and from their shape we build our understanding of the world. Two children are led into the woods. They are lost for a time, but then are captured by an old witch. The child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park. He wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch. In the oldest version of this story, the mother and the witch were the same person. I never wanted to be the witch. So. But I am, aren't I? We talked a little bit about the postpartum depression thing. 
And that line there, where she says, I never wanted to be the witch, but I am, aren't I? To me, is, is the thing. Nobody who suffers from these sort of things wants to be like that or wants to have these, these illnesses. And it's, it's, to me, that, like, if you don't feel anything for Lorraine at that point, if you're like, oh, that silly bitch, then you're not getting it, right? Mm. Because some people, I've seen people on Twitch, they're like, oh, fuck Lorraine, she's such a stupid bitch, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, where's your empathy switch? Unbelievable. Like, if you don't understand what people go through, if you, if you can't get that this is, it's super tough for people, mm. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, and to me, that line sums it up. She doesn't want to be the way she is. She does not want to be in this situation. Uh, Eyes Without Sparkle is actually a book about postpartum depression, mm, but we yeah. we didn't have the it used to say a journey through, oh, okay. and I removed that line because I didn't want it to sort of be really really obvious. Sure, yeah, to yeah. Sort of think about it a little bit. I find um, it funny though you're mentioning like empathy and internet in the same, same yeah, sentence. Sure. It's one of those. I think it's uh, I don't it's know, sad, I, I, but it's I'm uh, like I'm I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm like I think the internet is like an iceberg. And the bit that's poking out of the water is all the assholes, and then the rest <laughs> of the true. internet is full of really good people. That's my thought. They're the ones that hold the assholes yeah, up the top. Yeah, that's true. Um, also, are very, very one, visible. One final thing that I'll say before we jump into the last bit: the this room, this library. What I wanted here, and this is an example of what happens when you make a six-month project. What I wanted was that when you come through that door out of an apartment, you're in a forest, and there's a candy house ahead <laughs> of you, a gingerbread house in the woods ahead of you. You realize that looks nothing like that, right? I get that, yeah. No, okay. I, I wasn't sure. Funny. It's funny how that works. Yeah. And so that's what I really wanted this section to be. Yeah. That you walk through the woods towards the candy house and follow like a trail of glowing breadcrumbs on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and it leads you to the house of the witch. And when you get inside the house, you open the oven door. And then the final cutscene stuff would play. And three little pigs come out. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, I think you're, you're mixing your metaphors there. Oh, mixing right. Your fairy oh, tales. an old game I used to oh, Unless that's a French character. Mixed up Mother Goose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, mixed up Mother Goose. Yes, yeah, man. By Sierra. Yes. 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 <laughs> you're damn straight. <laughs> All right. Cool. And lots of people, it's funny, they come in here because of the light. It's the direction thing we were talking yeah, about. Lots yeah. of people go, oh, is that going to explode? I, better, oh, I suppose I'll go this way. Cal. Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Skip the bit about giggling on the slab. Callum. And you hear Callum giggling at the start mm. of the cinematic. Callum. Skip that, that pop up but yeah. Callum. yeah. Because Scott was doing this. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about, about, you know, that Yeah, so th so this is this is the the symbolism the here is in. is like the right the the sort of not the right brain, the the base level of her brain, the, the instinct is actually pushed to the background. Yeah. And here is her desires, and this is the battle she has, right? It's, it's like, does she really want this? Um, and this is a part of the, the cerebral cortex part, right? Because this is the part where she makes an active choice. Yeah. But is it, is it making her do this, or yes. was it a... Uh, was it the part? Was she willing, yeah. And then... <laughs> Like, I think it, it is difficult. I mean, it is powerful for sure, and it's. I understand why the opinions are so divide. mixed. On yeah, that. yeah, of course, of course, me too. And it should be. I mean, it's it's kind of a. But I think the story couldn't really end any other way. It's uh, you are powerless to it, but it is her story. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's, it's it's the the <laughs> the cutscene guys who worked on that cutscene. We had to give them a day off because they were like. Oh, after they finish that, they're yeah, like, uh, like yeah. oh, I mean, like Stian has to do that motion, you mm. know, five hundred times hey, of Lorraine, her lowering Lorraine. the pick and mm. don't <gasps> look at his hand. Look at his hand. Everybody, look at his hand. All the time. Not that hand. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! The other it hand is a hand. You should see his hand somewhere. Are you seeing one uh, on his shoulder? At that? There a little bit. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. So this is definitely like a, a part of the of the game, which is if you've played the Secret World, you get so much more out of this. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, it feels a little bit random, but Park. it's. Um, Mm. Yeah, I think it helps still selling that end. Like again, it's like you know you knew what was happening, you knew what happened, and it's just confirming this. Like it's no twist. It's just, you know, this this is the game and this is what sadly some people go through and you know, we hope like to to help yeah. you feel closer to to that. It's very intentional to uh, to 
drive the secret world into people's minds there as well, like the with the bee thing. I, I actually wanted people who played the park to be saying, "Hey, what's that bee there?" Turn the lights on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Full yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... So yeah, it was. That's the park. Yeah. <laughs> Hope Thanks you guys for enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a lot awesome. of fun. A lot of fun playing through and talking. I yeah. I, obviously, I'm not gonna have like the reaction that I had. <laughs> you know, because I've played it 400 times at this point. But like, it, it's really fun to be able to talk a little bit about what we were thinking and how yeah, we, yeah. how we built it. And yeah. Thank you for inviting me on the stream. It was fun. No, you were welcome. Thank you for coming. I mean, it was yeah. uh, it was really interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, you know, we've already played through uh, actually the follow-up, the Tyne mission, um, a few weeks ago. So if you want to go back and look at the streams now, you can see like the whole thing in order. Uh, but no, it was. I mean, it was really fun. I mean, for me, it's something like, you know, as I said, I did not get to to work on this project, but it's still something I feel very close to. I thought it's it's a great story. I think like your team did a fantastic job, like uh, getting it through. And first of all, like from a technical standpoint, in such a short time, but I think from a storytelling perspective, like it's 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 an intense story that comes across well. Uh, one one alternative we title we considered. Uh, sorry, one alternative title we considered for the park with this image was "Dude, where's my Callum?" <laughs> Dude, where's my Callum? <laughs> I actually have that as my Skype avatar yeah, at the oh, moment. For, for the True record, story. This the, so this is this is the image that he was talking about. The, the little outro bit. Can I switch? Uh, oh, never mind. Now it's all it's all finished up now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that's fine. So yeah. So yeah. Where, Dude, where's my Callum? Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, yeah, that's that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, a lot of people from Twitch are also very appreciative of the time that we've taken to just like kind of talk about the design process and like what went on behind this. I, cool. I think that this is a story that has really affected some people. Uh, yeah. just, you know, just really deeply. And we, we talked about a lot of really subject, really heavy subject matter. Yeah, and no, I, I mean, uh, I know so we were, you. I know we Appreciate were quite. It. We were quite like we were laughing and joking <laughs> a lot, but I mean, you know, it's it's done with. The game itself yeah. was made with with definite respect and deep intentions yeah, yeah. to try and. You know, I mean, raise raise a good way, like you know, when you deal with something as well, so great. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a course. good way for you to cope. Like yeah, you know, just as a as, as a human being, like it's it's we get affected by our games. You know, I get affected by Secret sure. all the time, and it's something that it's it's tough. when you bring it home, like it's difficult to detach. Like sometimes. absolutely, so it's a, and it's a good mechanism. Yeah. And you know, I love the Secret World crowd as always. So it's it's really fun. To, lovable. It's really yeah. fun to uh, something. To make a game that was kind of like a, a bit of a love letter to them as well while I was writing it. Like, yeah. you know, there was lots of stuff like it was like you, you have to have mainstream appeal, but you also have to talk to the secret world players and you have to do this and that. There was a lot of times when I was like sitting there and I was just grinning. Like when we added, like when we had that final cutscene with the guy with the bee in yeah. the jar, I'm like, normal people watch this and be like, ah, secret world people will be like, <laughs> Like, all right, next stream, be... Jewel will have no hands. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> secret world people will be like, normal people watch this and be like, oh, secret world people will be like, <gasps> what's up? Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. up? No, no. Who put that bee there? I hoped anyway. I hope someone did that because otherwise I feel kind of lame because I was really excited about that. People have yeah, been yeah, no, yeah, for, for sure. sure. For sure. <laughs> well, we hope right, you guys, uh, you guys enjoyed all of this. Uh, stay tuned. Much like love. you know, if you enjoy your stories, like you know, we have a lot more. Um, a lot more ideas, so we hope to do more things like this, like we hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, and then we'll see you uh, on the 4th of December, if I'm correctly, for the next uh, Streaming Wines normal episode, uh, where we're going to talk about issue 13. So stay tuned, folks, yeah? Issue 13. Yes, sir. All right, thanks for Until joining then, us, guys. Have a good night. Ciao, ciao. See ya. Cool. Great. <laughs>